Helmet colour for the first race of the evening. This is the final round here in the Marion Rose Motor Arena here this evening in Torrent. It's a terrific turnout as always. A lot of meetings going on with uh, the FIM and the rights holders. It's um, uh, plenty going on. There's a new calendar out, so we know exactly where we're going in 2025 as well. But here and now, it's all about the racing. And, uh, the meeting is about to get underway. Start Marshall just making sure Lebedevs is in the right spot. He's happy, he moves away. Green light comes on, tapes are up. What a start it is from Dudek, absolutely nailed that. He files himself to the front, Matzo Janowski there hanging on in second place. Coming through into third is Lebedevs with the cutback, Hukenbeck is relegated to the back. Patrick Dudek, he was ready, wasn't he? Absolutely dropped the clutch, spot on, he's out in front looking good. Yeah, Patrick Dudek was uh, electric from the start, I've got to say. Matzo Janowski's in determined mood, he made plenty of room for himself coming into the first turn. Track a little bit wet at the moment, the track will take time to settle down. We saw in SGP2 last night, it took a few heats to settle down, but once uh, it did, the racing was electric, and Dudek at the moment out front. Janoski chasing him down and matching him for speed, but he doesn't look threatening at the moment. That's a Dudek just hugging the inside. I'll tell you what, Janoski's not far away, Chris. He's coming on strong. Ooh. He's having one last blast here. Can he find a little bit of extra grip? He's square in the corner off, trying to make a big, long straight. Charging now to the outside. Dudek has just hugged that inside. Trusted that the shortest way is the fastest way. And the wild card, Dudek, starts with a fine win there. Delights the home crowd, of course, right here in the extra league of four torrent. And he gets off to the best possible start in more ways than one. Three points against his name, of course. But what an electric start it was. He absolutely nailed it. And uh, the bike drove beautifully into the first corner, did not put a foot wrong. Three points for Dudek out in front. Matej Janowski looking threatening in second place. Two points, Andre Lebedev. One point in third place, and Kai Hukabek misses out in the first race of the evening. But uh, the ideal start for Patrick Dudek. Yeah, Patrick Dudek exactly where he wanted to be out front. Makes a really good start. Bike drives nicely to the corner. Doesn't lurch forward just as he gets there. He's able to chase right around the inside. Matej Janowski's just made plenty of room for himself as he comes into the corner there. You can see he moves Hukovic way, way wide. Lebedevs looks like he's got a chance to cut back, but Janoski's wise to that, gets back down to the curb. He does set after Dudek, and I've got to say, in the last lap, lap and a half, he seemed to have a little bit more pace than Dudek had out front, but he just wasn't able to find that way past. The track will take a few races to settle down, but once it does, we will see some great racing. Indeed, we will. Just a little greasy out there, and um, Patrick Dudek trusted that uh, the inside line was the correct place to be, and so it proved. Heat number two, riders out on track, making their way towards the tapes. We'll see Martin Vasilik for the first time. He's won here, of course, before. Robert Lambert also out. So another terrific-looking lineup here. So heat number two, riders there. On the inside is Martin Vasilik in the red helmet colour. Dominic Cabrera, gate number two in blue. Kim Nilsson. He's uh, an injury replacement coming out here in uh, heat number two, gate three in white. And Robert Lambert, of course, a Grand Prix winner now. He'll go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. A lot of people predicting that Robert could well win here tonight, make it back-to-back -back Grand Prix wins. And uh, I'm sure he would dearly love to in front of his home crowd here in Poland. Yeah, that's for sure. A couple of riders here that, uh, with, a, with an extremely good meeting, uh, Vashlik Kubera, they could move forward, could move up, but they are reliant on riders ahead of them having a bad meeting. And Robert Lambert coming off the outside gate. I've got to say, the gate positions last night varied throughout the meeting. There was no one hot gate, got to say. So uh, Kubera, who needs a big, big night if he wants to make the top six, starting very strongly here in heat number two. Martin Vashlik has settled down here. Jack's pretty slick. Some. Uh, Kubera found the extra grip, found the speed, and what a way to start the night. Hasn't had great Polish Grand Prix this season, but uh, first ride there, very different indeed. Picks up the big three points. He'll be absolutely chuffed to bits with that. Relied on his bike, working well for first corner, and it delivered. Absolutely spot on. Relegating Martin Vasilik into second place. Kubera wins three points for him. Second place is Martin Vasilik, two points. Robert Lambert coming through into third place. One point to Kim Nilsson. Missed out there in heat number two. First turn there by that man was absolutely superb. Yeah, got the bike working absolutely great. 
I've got to say that uh, Martin Vashik, ha having actually got into the corner just ahead of Kubera, may be a little bit frustrated that the uh, Polish man was able to get around the outside of him. He does it absolutely superbly well by just finding a bit more traction than what Martin Vashik had. And we see Robert Lambert there uh, roaring up the inside of Kim Nielsen for a solitary point. Be a little disappointed to have started with one point off the outside gate. Gate four here can work quite well, but I think the track just needs a little bit more time. Yeah, not quite as grippy on the outside as it was last night, so you can't use that yet. We did see Mikael Anderson in the first race of the night roar around the outside in the SGP2 meeting on yesterday. So uh, not quite the same preparation as it was um, uh, last night. So heat number three, the riders are approaching the tapes. That's Jankovic just making his way round to the inside gate. We'll see Freddie Lindgren for the first time, who slipped up two weeks ago in Voyens. That was a great shame for Fast Freddy. Kavex on the inside in the red helmet colour. Simon Wozniak, gate number two in blue. Freddy Lindgren coming out of gate number three in white. And Dan Bewley goes from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Now, Bewley's in next season. He's in uh, fifth place right now, but there's no doubt that Bewley will really like to have a really strong finish here this evening in Torin. It's um, uh, he's riding very well, there's no doubt about it. We saw him earlier this week in Manchester. He rode absolutely fabulously there. And uh, certainly gate four might pose quite a challenge at this early stage of the evening. Yeah, I'm sure it will. He will have seen that Robert Lambert really struggled to uh, find any traction from gate four in the previous race. Freddie Lindgren picked up, of course, just three championship points in more. such a disappointing night for him. Indeed it was. Can he bounce back tonight? Look good in qualifying. Put in a very respectable time. The top three there. Oh, Marshall just making sure everybody's in the right place. He moves away now. Green light comes on. Trapes are up into the first corner and it's Quebec off the inside oh, fabulous Lindgren. first turn from Lindgren oh my goodness goes square off the corner here comes Bewley four abreast nearly down the back straight very congested indeed but stunning move from Lindgren now Lindgren coming under pressure from Quebec Bewley's in there oh right what on earth is going on because Freddie Lindgren's gone from first to last Quebec ran the outside but Bewley now firing himself to the front oh, yeah. fabulous speedway here in heat number three yeah great race in heat number three Jan Quebec was super brave on that Opening lap coming into turn three, he kept the throttle wide open coming into the corner. Dan Bewley wisely backed out of that one, but uh, cut back, got his way up the inside by working nicely, race settling down. Freddie Lindgren certainly won't be giving up, but uh, great ride from Jankovic, Dan Bewley out front. Bewley looking good here, had to be really smart there as they concluded the first lap, made the move. It's uh, paying off massively here. He's out in front. Gate number four, not easy at this early stage. He picks up a fabulous win there. Freddie Lingwin won't really understand what happened there. They were coming at him inside, outside. Super move in the first corner. Looked like it might well have been uh, good enough to win the race. In the end, he was relegated back into third. But for Dan Muley, gets off to a flying start there in heat number three. Really spectacular ride from Dan Muley. Three points, Jan Kovet, but a good ride there in second place. Two points for him. Freddie Lindgren relegated to third place. One point for him and Simon Wozniak. Missing out in heat number three. Race of the night so far. And, uh, a very entertaining opening lap here. Yeah, heat number three all about that opening lap. Swapping positions everywhere. Freddie Lindgren, look at that. Great cutback. Times it perfectly up this time. Runs across Kovec. And Bewley thinks he's got the opportunity there. Kovec keeps it on. Bewley has to back out of it. And I think that was quite a wise move. He's got Simon Wozniak on the inside and Quebec rides straight across Freddie Lindgren. Freddie Lindgren then does the right thing. OK, I'll cut back. Of course, Dan Bewley's already taken that bit of track. So he has absolutely nowhere to go. And then Dan Bewley sticks with the inside, runs across the corner. The track's a little bit drier down there. Jan Quebec's gone very wide in search of a little bit more extra traction. But uh, Dan Bewley gets his nose in front and stays there. Yep. Super ride there from Dan Bewley and an entertaining speedway race in heat number three, that's for sure. Ferry Lingwin was at the back at one stage. He went from first to last there in a blink of an eye. Had to battle hard to get back amongst the points, but uh, a strong start for the British man there, Dan Bewley. With a uh, good ride there. Number three going his way. And gate number four not proving to be easy, but uh, certainly battled his way through. Gate number four. 
riders are at the tapes. That will conclude the first block of races. And what a lineup this is. Jack Holder, a big night required by him. Inside gate, red helmet colour. Gate number two in blue is Leon Madsen. Max Frick will go from gate number three in white. And the new world champion, Bartosz Smarzlik, off the outside in yellow. Smarzlik was the quickest man in qualifying. He chose to go out in heat number four. And then he backed it up in heat number five. The draw is number 13. And uh, will he be able to uh, strut his stuff going to the first corner from the outside gate? He will be relaxed, but uh, he's a racer, he's a winner. He'll want to win here tonight in Torrent. Yeah, he would love to win here in front of his own fans. Of course, he will be presented with the World Championship trophy at the end of the night. Jack Older, he's a few points here. He wants to get himself into that top six. Indeed he does. Green lights on, tapes are up. Away they go into the first turn. Looks like Holder's just about got there. Schmarzlik's trying to get around the outside, but no room at the end. Madsen's a threat in second place. Here comes Schmarzlik. Gets the better of his uh, Max Frick comes up the inside. Leon Madsen roaring around the outside, but Holder there. But Madsen once again winding it on. Mid-track, up the banking. Holder just about holding on there. But Madsen now stamps his authority on the race. A uh, super ride from Leon Madsen. We know he's always got a lot of speed in a straight line, Jack Holder now looking for a sneaky way out the inside, Madsen wise that closes him down around the inside, it's all about, nobody's going out wide at the moment, Two out of the, here comes Marsnick, look at this, putting Holder under pressure. Indeed it is, Leon Madsen's ridden a really strong race here, a lap to go, the Danish rider hasn't had a great season but he's starting in great fashion here. Got the better of Jack Holder. Smarzlik's tried awfully hard, but Jack Holder has remained firm there in second place. Madsen with a super ride there. I say that uh, reminds me of the sort of rides he was putting in in 2019 when he had a seven ride maximum that night to close right in in the championship chase and finish world number two in 2019. Leon Madsen showed a great turn of speed there to get the better of Jack Holder. Three points for the Danish rider Madsen. Jack Holder back in second place. Two points, one point for the world champion Bartosz Smarzlik. Max Frick missing out in a very competitive heat number four. There's a position after everybody's had one outing. Three points for Madsen, Bewley, Kubera and Patrick Dudek. And two points for Vasilik Holder, Jankovic and Matsei Janowski. That rounds out the top eight. Meeting underway. Right there from Neil Madsen, Chris. This uh, was unexpected, but uh, nonetheless, it was uh, good to watch. Yeah, great ride from him. Simply quicker than Jack Holder. He kind of did nothing special. He did go out in search of a bit of grip on this first lap, and he was riding wider. He did generate more speed out there, but uh, just simply quicker. He's carrying a bit more speed than Jack Holder. Jack Holder very defensive on the inside there on the curb, but he left so much room for Leon Madsen to ride wherever he wanted. And uh, you're not going to be quick if you're coming into these corners quite that narrow. Madsen had that extra speed, got into the corner very easily and really never looked back. Smarslik, not off the pace, never is, but it was difficult for him in these early heats. Track's quite slick at the moment to uh, generate ex extra speed, not easy at all. The track will evolve as the evening goes on, that's for sure. And overtaking will be possibly a little easier, but uh, Leon Madsen certainly made light of that. Dan Bewley likewise, so... Uh, Good opening four races there. Good to see Brian Carger in there. Works, of course, closely with Leon Madsen. Has done for some time, but uh, a strong start there for the Danish rider. Upgrading going on now. We'll uh, have a look at uh, the gate success at the, uh, after four races here this evening. Early days, of course, it will change, but uh, interesting nonetheless. One win from the inside, two out of gate number two. Nothing from gate three yet, and one win from the outside gate at this very early stage here in Torin tonight. Got to say, although the track was slick, we've seen a couple of uh, entertaining races, but I'm sure we're going to see plenty more. Yeah, smashing to hear from Ryder there. Clearly um, uh, his first uh, taste of European speedway and is enjoying it immensely, and uh, I'm sure he will do because there's plenty more racing to come. There's no doubt uh, the action will get hotter and hotter as the evening goes on. Let's take a look at the next four races uh, for you. Uh, heat uh, 5 through to Heat 8. This will be everybody's second appearance here tonight with Bartosz Marslik coming off the inside this time but Patrick Dudek starting strongly so is Martin Vasley Freddie Lingman that's a tough race actually heat number five heat six Leon Madsen Jankovic Matej Janowski and Kim Nilsson heat seven we've got Wozniak there looking for points Jack Holder 
Dominic Cabrera started strongly, and a nice win for there. And Kai Hukenbeck, Andre Lebedevs, Robert Lambert, Dan Bewley, and Max Frick. A big shootout in heat number eight. So the next four races for you there up on screen. You can follow and look and see exactly what is going to happen there. But uh, there's no doubt there's one or two tasty looking heats there coming up. Looking forward to it. Yeah, water going down again here, Chris, as well, which I am surprised to see. I'm not quite sure why that is on such a cold evening. No, we saw it quite a bit uh, last night for the SGP2 final round, and uh, at times I felt the track was definitely overwatered. It made life quite difficult for the youngsters. They coped with it well, I've got to say. It was a great night, but um, yeah, I'm not a fan of too much water going down, and uh, let's hope we don't see quite as much as we did last night but uh, just going back to the four heats coming up heat five the pick for me uh, Patrick Dudek coming off gate two win a first time out and then of course you've got three of the top four in the championship in Schmarslik, Vasilik and Lingren so uh, quite a competitive heat that one yeah, tasty looking on up, that's for sure and Patrick Dudek got off to such a strong start in his first ride really did absolutely fly away from the tapes in heat number one he drew, he, uh, drew the uh, number one draw so he will come out for a freshly prepared track each time he uh, enters the arena a little bit more water going down there on the inside as they just uh, complete that. So it will be greasy here in heat number five. As I say, at this time of year, late September, it's cold and um, uh, the water won't evaporate, but it will just sit on the top of the surface. So riders will have to handle that. You know, the bike may spin up a bit, it may be a little bit unpredictable at times, but um, we'll see how they handle these conditions as the evening progresses but yeah. for Bartos smiles he'll be looking to bounce back with a win here after a third place in heat number four uh, in particular in the first couple of rides with the uh, water gone down the first turn will be interesting because if you're coming off the inside gate it's a long slippery way to get to the dirt line and uh, it will benefit the riders on the outside gates Smarslik of course in this next one will be coming off the inside gate so it could be tough in there yeah the way they've prepped the track they've actually ripped the outside very wide yeah. but they have ripped it up a touch more so there is an opportunity if you're very brave but uh, a good point you make there about where Bartosz Smarslik starts from I suggest that uh, he will hug that white line through that first turn and then trust his bike has got enough grip and enough speed to hang on out in front if he gets away sharply. But Patrick Dudek is going to be a danger here, there's no doubt about that. Dudek, who is uh, a local man, he, uh, he rides here for this club. And of course, he is uh, in good form. He's uh, got some mojo back, he's got some confidence back here. A little like Matze Janowski sort of ran out of steam in the Grand Prix series, dropped out, but is uh, working hard to come back in 2025. As I say, we mentioned it often, but the GP Challenge next week is very important to who exactly is going to be competing in 2025. There will be four qualifiers there, and then, as a consequence, we will then have the four wild cards announced as well so eight riders to be confirmed after tonight's Grand Prix a little bit more track grading going on race director Phil Morris out there just quite animated actually at the moment I'm not quite sure what it's all about but uh, an extended grading break here and uh, there's no doubt that some um, uh, trying to get the track exactly as they want it before they allow the riders to enter the arena yeah, the uh, challenge next weekend in part of it's, I mean, it's traditionally it's always a very tough meeting. There's a lot riding on it. Of course, you can ride your way into the Grand Prix series the following season. Um, of tonight's lineup, Holder and Cabrera chasing uh, automatic top six position, but they are both in the challenge along with Huckenbeck, Vec, Frick, Dudek. They're all here tonight. But it's a really tough lineup, this one, isn't it? Crikey, yeah, it really is, and uh, there's no doubt that uh, you cannot afford to make many mistakes when there's only four qualifiers. You really will need to be in the double figures as a minimum to try and make it through. So you're in the Grand Prix Series for 2025. There is a new calendar out which is announced. We have two uh, rounds in the UK. The National Speedway Stadium in uh, Manchester will uh, host a Grand Prix for the first time. We've had Speedway of Nation finals there, of course. We had it this year where Great Britain came out on top. But a Grand Prix, a lot of people keen to have a Grand Prix in that part of the world. Well, now in 2025, in June, we will be there. And uh, I'm sure it will be action-packed, arguably one of the best tracks in Europe in the northern part of the UK. Plenty of grading going on here. As I say, Phil was a little animated there, clearly unhappy with, with uh, what had happened. So a little bit of extra grading going on here before Heat 5 will get underway. 
no problem with the weather. It can be a problem here at this time of year. Yeah, I have been here when it's been quite inclement and we've had plenty of rain, but uh, it's, been, uh, it's been quite mild, although this evening it's a bit chillier than it was uh, yesterday. Looks like uh, the tractor is going to uh, exit stage right and uh, the riders will be then released out onto the track to get the action back underway. Artos Marsic, an incredible character, you know, he did say in the interview that uh, Riga, the win in Riga, was absolutely decisive. And from that moment on, he really felt, uh, felt the belief. Two months where he just could not switch off from how he could get back to the top. Things weren't quite going to plan, but uh, fair play. A really emotional interview, that's the most emotion I've seen him. Actually, right. You could see it in his eyes. It really was the moment for him when he clinched the deal two weeks ago in Boyens. And here he comes now. Of course, he won here 12 months ago and pretty much had to. He only had a small lead. Of course, he was disqualified in Boyens the penultimate round in 2023, but uh, showed great resolve and composure to come through in flying colours. A five-time world champion now. I'm sure he's enjoying coming here tonight without the pressure that he had last year Crikey, yes. for one of those wins. Absolutely right. So riders now coming up to the tapes for heat number five freddie out here third place uh, last time of course and uh, a really good looking lineup this could be easily be a final no question about it line up for you for heat number five smiles on the inside in the red helmet color alongside him in gate number two in blue is patrick dudek martin vasily gate three in white and freddie lingwin goes from the outside with the yellow helmet color on freddie a little unfortunate in his first try did such a smashing job initially in that first turn but uh, at the completion of the first lap he went from first to last had to work hard for one point yeah it's uh, it's, it's tough for freddie because it was he came off gate three in his opening ride but uh, now he's on another outside gate even further out gate four this time after a track grade mm. so uh, it is going to be tough for him but yeah really interesting looking line up this one if dudek can make a start half as good as he did in heat one then smarslick is going to have his work cut out to get there ahead of him indeed uh, another rider that has uh, no real pressure on his shoulders tonight is the wild card and uh, you would suggest that he will understand the bike setup that's required for here rides for the club of course so um uh, Torren made the semi-finals of the playoffs in the extra league of this year but Lublin just proved to be too strong in the uh, second leg so uh, haven't made the final so heat number five finally long delay apologies for that but so uh, the track needed a bit of extra attention bit of extra grip out there he saw it he went for it committed to it and, uh, it paid off in some spectacular style there dude it must have felt confident there initially with a smashing start away from gate number two. But Freddie Lingman came roaring to the front. Three points for him. Patrick Dudek back in second place. Two points. Bartosz Marslik only two points for two rides so far. He's back in third place there. And Martin Vasilik misses out in a very competitive heat number five. But that man showing well, once again, he never throws the towel in. No, it was, a, it was a clever move. We said it during the um, grading break that the water going down will make the first turn interesting. You had two choices didn't really expect anybody to take the uh, choice to go straight to the outside. Look, Freddie Lingwood doesn't even turn the bike. Everybody's turning left. He just keeps going straight. He knows he's got to keep his wheels in line. He's got to keep the bike going. Look at the speed he generates down the outside there. I thought he was going to complete the mission uh, as early as turns three and four, but Dudek right around the inside. A little bit of dry track there. Lingram once again enters the corner so much well. Has to get on the brakes there. Dudek <laughs> had him covered. He went straight to the fence and uh, it was a bit of a moment for Freddie Lingram this as he came down the straight. But uh, there, Dudek leaves him the space. And I've got to say, it, Lingram looks like he's doing 10 mile an hour more. It was a convincing ride from him. He worked it out. He watched the uh, grading. He realised that the track could work out there and it did. Yeah, very impressive indeed from the number 66 there. Disappointing uh, meeting a couple of weeks ago, but uh, he has come here, all guns blazing, third in his first ride, but a stunning ride there from Freddie Lingman, who clearly wants to do, uh, apply as much pressure as he possibly can. Yeah, we see the start again. And uh, it, was, it was a remarkable first turn. I mean, it was a reasonably even break. Dudek really got the bike to the corner. But uh, Freddie Lingren with calling all the right tactics. 
number six, the riders are off the tapes and uh, preparing themselves to get underway. The inside is uh, Leon Madsen in the red helmet colour. Jankovic out of gate number two in blue. Matej Janowski, gate number three in white. And Kim Nielsen going away from gate number two in the yellow helmet colour. Couple of changes to the bikes here for Kovac and Kim Nielsen. Three nights on. What a start from Leon Madsen. Absolutely jet propelled. Absolutely. Look at where's Kovac's gone. He's gone very wide indeed. He's thinking, yeah, I like that outside line. Look yeah, at that well. speed. He's going to come to the front. <laughs> Utilised it brilliantly. Now Madsen responding, trying to block that move. Will they get up the inside of him? Leon Madsen has recovered brilliantly there. Jan Kovac again going very high and wide. Janowski up the inside. Madsen's in a bit of trouble. Oh. Just about clouds in the feds. Kovac is giving chase. Yeah, Madsen knew where the attack was coming from, but he went to the dirt quite late. That meant he backed the bike into it. The bike reacted, uh, not in a favourable way, but I've got to say, Yankovic again, round the outside. Janoski on the inside. Look at the extra speed you can generate, but Madsen's going quick. Now Madsen's no man land. He's not quite gone oh. yet. He's got the extra grip there, but oh. tell you what, that got tight. Very tight indeed. Now Madsen back up the inside. Could have been blocked. Oh my goodness, that is some commitment from Jan Kovic. He has ridden out of his skin here in heat number six. Stunning ride from the man from the Czech Republic. I reckon that's his best Grand Prix ride of the season. That was spectacular. Well, that was really um, uh, breathtaking stuff there from Jan Kovic. Leon Madsen tried to block the move, couldn't react in the nick of time. Jan Kovac with a stunning ride, three points for him, Leon Madsen back in second place, two points, Matej Janowski, one point in third, and Kim Nielsen missing out there. And another tremendous race here in the Marion Rose Arena, and Jan Kovac, that's the best ride of the season for him at Grand Prix. Yeah, Jan Kovac, take a bell, another one that's watched the race, he's watched Freddie Linger, and he's come from gate two, he's gone right to the outside, he's actually put himself in last place, but he's generated so much more speed by doing it. And he chases Leon Madsen down. Leon doesn't really know how to cover the track. He doesn't really know where to ride. He wants to ride around the inside, take the shortest route, but he knows he's got to cover Yankovic's attack coming off the corner. And Yankovic just keeps sticking to it. He's putting himself at risk. We've got the riders on the inside there. Kim Nielsen, Masikinowski looking to take a shortcut, get in front of him. But I'll tell you what, what a super ride there. Just changes the tack to the inside. Bikes working well. Super, super ride from Yankovic. Indeed it was. Times like that next week, he might well be back in the series in 2025. That really was stunning stuff from the young Czech Republic uh, rider. And uh, he moves on to uh, five points now. He uh, leads the way with Patrick Dudek at this early stage. Strong start from Quebec. Best start to a Grand Prix this year. Really enjoying himself out there, there's no doubt about that. Heat number seven, Rogers at tapes. Line up for you is uh, Wozniak on the inside in the red helmet colour. Jack Holder, gate number two in blue. Gate three in white is Dominic Rivera and Kai Hukenbeck going from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Track is really beginning to develop, develop very nicely. I do think that extra little bit of grading there clearly has helped before heat number five because the track and the racing has really come alive. Yeah, they've done a lot of work and they did uh, actually dig up the track on the outside, but only very very wide i'd like to see him do a little bit more of that as we go through the night in the next couple of grading breaks but uh, it has certainly livened things up yeah absolutely Kubera out in front with a stunning move earlier on jack holder has had to fight for his life there to hang on to second plate Bosniak really putting him under immense pressure but uh, dominic Kubera, back-to-back race wins here in time this evening, what a strong start from him. He knows what's up for grabs. If he can make it into the top six. Jack Holder there, two solid second places tonight. Crikey, did he have to work hard for that because Wozniak was giving it his all. Three points for Dominic Rivera out in front. Jack Holder back in second place, two points. One point for Simon Wozniak and Kai Hukenbeck. Momentarily into second place, fails to score there. In uh, a uh, spectacular heat number seven. Looking forward to watching it again. <laughs> Don't really know where to start. Kubera sorts it out, doesn't make a cracking start. Uh, from gate three, but uh, just rides through the middle there. Bikes working nicely for him. Wozniak was in front. Hookenbeck made the longest straight, having come off gate four. Just cut back up the inside of everybody. Runs across the track. Jack Holder really messed the first turn up for me. He ran across the track, but he didn't go all the way to the dirt. And he found himself in no man's land, but he did sort it out later on. See Wozniak there, very oh. wide. Looking for a way back past Jack Holder, who's just decided to run around the inside. You see the tyre there flexing. Not too much air in that, running a pretty low pressure there. But uh, look at the bite lifting there. 
Uh, that was a moment for Kai Huckenbeck as he was at the back, unlucky not to score anything. Any one of those three riders behind Kubera could have come anywhere with that one. A strong start from uh, Dominic Kubera, unbeaten so far from his first two rides. Brilliant stuff from him. Hasn't had uh, the greatest uh, fortune in uh, Poland this year at the three level, but tonight is very different indeed. Heat number eight, everybody will have had a couple of rides at the completion of this one. So Lebedevs is off the inside in the red helmet colour. Robert Lambert with a change of bike here, gate number two in blue. Dan Bewley, a super win first time out, gate three in white. And Max Frick looking for points, goes from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Bewley, who uh, really did work it out beautifully in that first ride of his. And uh, clearly Robert Lambert reacting immediately here. Not uh, comfortable with that first bike, so going to give the second one a run here out of gate number two in heat number eight. Two Brits going head to head, and uh, Lebedevs on the inside gate. He could uh, be a bit of a fly in the ointment. Here we go then. Static ride from Dan Beauty, really enjoyed that. Roaring round the outside, wins comfortably. Elected to go from gate number three straight to the fence. Worked big time. Got himself to the front. Robert Lambert was literally scrapping for his life to get into, into second place with Max Frick. Early doors. Initially, Lebedev's got away very well as well, but failed to score. Bewley out in front remains unbeaten. Three points for him. The drive by Robert Lambert coming through to second place. Two points. Max Frick back in third. One point for him and Andre Lebedev misses out in heat number eight. Sensational Speedway here in Torrent tonight. Six points for Bewley and Cabrera. Five points for Quebec, Dudek, Leon Madsen, Freddie Lingon on four, Jack Holder on four likewise, and Robert Lambert rounding out the top eight there on three points. Smashing Speedway and Bewley looking good. How about that? That really was. It reminded me what he was doing at the National Speedway Stadium on Monday. Just loves it out wide in the dirt. Yeah, he does. He's uh, very confident. He's such a good motorcyclist. He's not worried about it. You see the bike just grabs big time as he gets there, as he drifts across to the outside, gets it under control immediately, doesn't have to get off the throttle. Bike lurches forward, generates loads of speed. Poor Lebedev's made a decent start off the inside, just gets completely beaten up there by Lambert and then Max Frick says yeah okay I can do that as well and comes across the front there uh, we don't normally see moves like that from Max but he meant that one didn't he but uh, crikey yeah yeah he did and and uh, Lambert just like Bewley just riding right around the fence I mean they are leaving the corner they are actually riding on the berm in the bottom of the fence you are no more than well less than half a meter off the fence when you're out there brilliant stuff from Dan Bewley he leads the way with uh, Dominic Kubera both unbeaten so far after two outings, and uh, there's no doubt that Bewley has started strongly here tonight. He's had gate four and gate three, and he has a maximum score so far. He'll have a couple of uh, gate number twos to complete his uh, qualifying heats. So uh, Bewley going along very nicely indeed. OK, let's get some reaction now. Abby Stevens is going to be joined by Freddie Lingren. Freddie, you were so deserving of your nickname of Fast Freddie in that Heat 5. Yeah, that was, uh, was good. They, they did a long break and uh, tried to create an outside line, I think, and uh, I think they succeeded, but it was, it's very wide. How much are you holding your breath? Because you're so close to the fence. It's such, it's gnarly out there tonight. Uh, it is, it is when I do it like that. Uh, it's. Uh, also with the water as well, so you have a lot of RPM when you hit that, uh, that uh, dirt, so it's, it's not easy. In that first heat, you made an amazing cutback in the first corner, but they were just coming at you from all directions. Yeah, I kind of misjudged the, the line shots. Uh, when I looked at the track, it looked like it was going to be a little bit of dirt on the outside, but it was, it was still very slippery. I think this material is, uh, with the water, it, it gets very slippery. Well, it was a great, great comeback in your next heat. Good luck for the rest of the evening. Thank Thanks for chatting, Freddie. Back to you guys. Yes, it was a, a terrific ride, and we've seen one or two similar efforts uh, around that outside line, and he uh, described it perfectly there with the uh, the way the track has been set up this evening. Um, a little wart uh, going on, slippery out there, but uh, very wide indeed. Riders having to be courageous to ride right around the air fence like that. And we'll take a look at the gate success after eight heats so far this evening. 
So just one win from the inside. Now that is unusual. Three three wins out of gate number two, two out of gate three, and two out of the outside gate. So once again, similar to last night, quite unpredictable. You would have thought gate one would have been the place to be, but as soon as they ripped it up around the outside, all of a sudden the outside gates have come to the fore again. Yeah, for sure. You know, after heat four, they out ripped up the outside. And, and we've, I've got to say, all four of those heats, five to eight, uh, were entertaining. <laughs> it certainly did the trick for them. But uh, we heard Freddie saying there that, uh, you know, you, you've got a lot of wheel spin as you go across the track where it's wet. And uh, that is a problem when you get to that deep dirt on the very outside, so close to the fence. But uh, it's certainly made for some interesting racing. My z gorącym, pro, gorącą prośbą, gorącym apelem, a w zasadzie dwoma. Po pierwsze, poprosimy... Right. Uh, race is in now in the final round of the SGP World Speedway Championship here in Torin tonight and uh, it has uh, livened up absolutely brilliantly. Last four races have been breathtaking stuff. Beauty leads the way with Kaberi. He's unbeaten so far on six points. Jan Kavek, what a night he's having. Five points. Best start to a Grand Prix this season. Patrick Dudek likewise. Got to say the world champion with a couple of points. Um, uh, he's got some work to do. He'll battle his way, I'm sure, but uh, just two points from his uh, opening two rides. So, uh, I'll have a look at uh, heat number seven from the drone's perspective. It didn't really matter which one they chose. They've all been exciting, <laughs> and uh, this one is no different. Yeah, you could have picked anyone. The, uh, the challenge in this one wasn't for first place, but it was certainly all going on behind Dominic Kubera there. Uh, up the inside, Kai Huckenbeck. That was a bit of a shock, I think, for Wozniak and uh, Holder. They didn't expect him to be able to generate so much speed down the inside. Wozniak settles down in second place just for a half a corner there as Jack Holder then roars up the inside, oh, tries to stop him getting oh, into goodness. the corner. <laughs> it was awfully close, but Kubera is missing all this. I think he'd be quite happy with that as Jack Holder once again gets up the inside. Super move from Wozniak as he just turns left, goes down the inside. This uh, hook and peck there, oh, I tell you, clatters the fence there after the bike lifts on him. You are, there's no room for error. When you're riding that close to the fence, you cannot make a mistake. Indeed, Cabrera with a uh, terrific start to the evening. He's out in front here. And Jack Holder had to work very hard because Wozniak was coming at him inside, outside, really putting the Australian under a lot of pressure. But uh, Holder held firm there, and he started with two solid second places tonight. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, he'll be relatively happy with that, looking for his first win. But he's got three more opportunities to, to do so. So uh, let's have a look at uh, some of the winning times so far. Dan Bewley, he's uh, win in heat number eight at the quickest time so far and comfortably quicker than everybody else. Leon Madsen earlier on in heat number four. Lindgren in heat five there. Dominic Cabrera, heat number two. And we've got Dudek, Cabrera again and Bewley in heat number seven. Jan Kovec also makes the top eight on the times so far this evening. A bit more water going down which is um, uh, their want here this weekend. They feel that that is appropriate. I think uh, there's one or two people that possibly think differently, but um, uh, they do know this track. And I've got to say, you can't argue. The last <laughs> four races have been brilliant. Yeah, it's five to eight have been super entertaining. I think the water will stop possibly after this uh, grading break. I don't think we'll see any more. So uh, we'll take a look at uh, the next four races for you. Now with heat number nine up first, uh, with Kim Nielsen looking for points, Max Frick there also likewise. Packard Dudek's had a good start, Simon Wozniak, spectacular last time, but just uh, picking up one point so far. Dan Bewley unbeaten, Martin Vassilic looking to bounce back. Failed to score last time. Jack Holder there with two second places. Matt Janowski needs a big night. Robert Lambert looking for more. Freddie Lindgren going great guns now. Looking back struggling. Leon Madsen also looking strong here this evening. Bartosz Marsling in heat number 12. Now, no panic, but uh, there's no doubt two points from two outings. He'll be looking for better than that. Andre Lebedev's Jan Kovec. What a start to the night for him. And, of course, Dominic Kubera. Like Dan Beauty, he's unbeaten from two outings so far. Track grading going on again. But um, uh, I must say, you can't criticise the, the racing in heats five to eight. Absolutely spectacular. That's what World Championship Speedway is all about. Yeah, Dan Bewley's uh, unbeaten at the moment. 
on six points. He's come off outside gates in his first two races. I think the, the, the draw could work for him tonight because I do believe that if they, if they stop watering after this, which they may well do, then it will be a little bit easier to make the first turn work from the inside gate. So uh, it could work out quite well for him. Yeah, he's got uh, gate number one and hit 10, Dan Bewley, to keep that unbeaten run going. Patrick Dudek there. He's in uh, rank number three this time. The wild card has uh, ridden nicely so far. He sits on five points. As I say, Patrick Dudek, he was uh, world number two in his debut season back in 2017. He won here that year in Torren, but uh, of course, Jason Doyle had the upper hand in Melbourne when he uh, won his first world championship. And uh, Jason Doyle is here. And good to see him fighting fit again. He's been on the bike. I am hearing rumours that he could well be competing next week in the Czech Golden Helmet. So champion at the bit, actually, Jason, to get back on the bike. But just uh, good news that uh, that shoulder injury is healed up and he feels ready to go racing again. Yeah, it's been a battle for... Uh in particular, his mechanic and his wife to keep him off the bike, to be honest. <laughs> They've had to lock the garage, but lock sure, everything away from him. Sure, refreshing that a, a rider that's been around a long time and uh, still retains tremendous enthusiasm to go racing. So um, uh, let's hope that he's uh, back in the series next year. Not a given, of course, but uh, Artur Smarslik just having a bit of a chat. Slow start to the night for Bartos, hasn't quite uh, got it together so far. He was quickest in practice, but uh, so far this evening that isn't then uh, translating into big points. As I say, he's got three more opportunities to try and make the semi-finals here this evening. And uh, we will see Smarzdek coming out of gate number one and heat 12. So he'll be hoping for better in that one. But uh, before then, we have three races to come. We see Kim Nielsen uh, making his way round to the start. Wozniak, who was spectacular last time, but he uh, needs some more points if he wants to make the semi-finals. It's been a tough campaign for Simon Wozniak in Grand Prix in 2024. But, um, uh, just never know, he might well be able to battle his way back in the future and be better prepared and understand exactly what the challenge is all about. So, riders at tapes for heat number nine. Yeah, you could uh, could say that Dudek and, and Janoski are almost the same. They've had that break and then they're going to come back maybe stronger. So Kim Nielsen will go from the inside in the red helmet colour on the second bike. Max Rick out of gate number two in blue. Patrick Dudek uh, going along nicely tonight. Gate number three in white. And Wozniak going from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Spectacular stuff. I do hope you're enjoying it because those last four races, I tell you what, you don't see much better than that. It really was uh, exciting stuff. A little chaotic at times, but uh, tremendously exciting. This uh, that audience here in the... Marianne Rose Arena, I'll tell you what, they were transfixed by it. We've got a uh, little bit of debris on the track there, just uh, being removed. A bit of gardening going on, 30 seconds left for riders to be at the tapes, ready to go. Kim Nielsen has found it tough so far this evening, he's on the inside gate. But Patrick Dudek, he's the one here who is in top form so far from a couple of rides. It was only a stunning performance by Lindgren round the outside that got the better of uh, Patrick last time out. Max Frick solid in second there, but uh, no doubt Patrick Dudek is in the mood here this evening. Turn back up the inside. The bike worked beautifully down the back straight. Class two riders going into turn number three. Brilliant. Three points for Patrick Dudek. Max Frick back in second place. Two points. Wozniak in third. One point for him and Kim Nielsen misses out there in heat number nine. Jack was greasy there, but uh, Patrick Dudek made a decisive move early on here. Yeah, it was a super move from Dudek. Didn't make the best of starts from gate three. Max Rick and Kim Nielsen battling to the corner ahead of him. Simon Wozniak straight out the outside. But look at this move from Dudek in white there, up the inside, just gets his wheels in line. Bike just drives down the inside of that straight absolutely perfectly. No room there. Kim Nielsen actually has to get out of his way. Dudek says, I'm coming through. You're going to need to make room and uh, come through on the inside there. Max Rick last minute does well to turn the bike as hard as he did and not to drift wide because I'm sure Max Rick would have found a way back up the inside. Simon Wozniak, I tell you what, no one has ridden any harder for just two points so far tonight than that man. Yeah, total commitment from him, but uh, frustrating that he hasn't been able to pick up more points, but you're, you're spot on. He is uh, giving it his all, but it's just 
not quite working out for him so far this evening. That man very different. Dudek uh, now moving on to eight points, just dropped one point so far. And Patrick, who uh, we spoke to a few years ago in Prague, the Marquetta Stadium, and in truth, he'd lost his way. Didn't have much confidence at all. So um, good to see him riding as well as ever here tonight in Torrent. So we've got uh, heat number 10. And we'll see uh, Dan Bewley there. He'll go from the inside in the red helmet colour. Martin Vasilic looking to bounce back this time. Gate number two in blue. Jack Holder, gate three in white. And Matteo Janowski going from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Another great looking line up here, that is for sure. And uh, that man has had a better start to the Grand Prix than in previous ones recently. Really has struggled for form in the last three Grand Prix. But uh, he knows what's at stake. He's in the challenge, but he probably doesn't want to go no. there. He doesn't want to go there. He wants to do the uh, the business here tonight. My goodness, Matt Sajunowski is having to be very brave indeed. He's got to say, Jack Holder, this is much more like it. From the Australian rider, brilliant opening lap. And he wins nicely there. Good stuff from here. Martin Vasilik having to work very hard to hang on to second place. Matze Janowski, the hardest working rider there, just for one point. And Dan Bewley, who was unbeaten, fails to score there. It really was, once again, a tricky race, as you rightly say. Not easy to know exactly where to put the bike. But uh, Jack Holder did. Three points for him. Martin Vasilik coming through into second place. Two points. Matze Janowski, one point in third. And Dan Bewley missed out for the first time tonight fails to score and another entertaining race heat number 10 jack holder looking like a man who's going to be back next year yeah jack holder worked really hard for this one as he comes off gate three there he's pretty hard on yanoski in the first turn yanoski says right okay if you're going to do that I'm going to run right out to the dirt manages to get himself into third place but jack holder's Battled hard all night. There's the mistake from Martin Vasilek. That changed the context of the race completely. Bike just launches him into the corner, has to go wide, and uh, that allows Jack Holder up the inside of him. Jack's been in the mix all night. It's his first race win at the third attempt, but he's had a couple of second places before that. I think he'd be reasonably happy with this start. He's on seven points from three outings and uh, going along very nicely indeed. And there's no doubt he's got a little bit more about him tonight. Matze Janowski, how hard did he have to work? Dan Bewley also in the track. I thought there for a moment Bewley was just going to force him very wide indeed. Could have been a bit tricky that, but uh, for that man out in front, quite working nicely. Knows his track well, of course, but uh, his form has been indifferent of late. But uh, here this evening, going along very nicely indeed. He needs five points to uh, make his way into the top six here tonight as a minimum. So heat number 11, Robert Lambert off the inside in red. Freddie Lingwin, gate number two in blue. Hulkenbeck on a change of equipment here. Gate number three in white. And Leon Madsen is looking good tonight. He'll go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. These sort of conditions, you know, Leon Madsen thrives on. Slightly slick, and he can really get that by hooking up. And so far this evening, he has proved to be quite a competitive rider. There's for sure. So heat number 11. Mark Marshall once again, quite fastidious there. Mikey, thought he was going to get the measuring tape out there for a moment. Super stuff. He slipped up two weeks ago in Vaughan's. Just got three points, finished 14th there, but gets the better of the man in front of him, Robert Lambert. Maybe a psychological blow, but uh, Lambert having to hang tough here in time tonight. But Freddie Lingren out in front, three points for him. Robert Lambert working hard, two points there. The Leon Madsen back in third place, one point for him. And Kai Hukenbeck fails the score in heat number 11. Can't take your eyes off it, can you? Really is exciting stuff. What a Speedway Grand Prix we've got. Yeah, heat 11 all about the opening lap. You see Fred carrying so much more speed out there. If he tries to shut the door, it's going to end in carnage. So he made a good, wise decision just to keep it down the middle of the straight. But Lingren, back-to-back -back wins for him. Yeah, he's looking really good. And right now, he has uh, a slight advantage over that man, Robert Lambert, the winner two weeks ago. There's no doubt that um, uh, the determination in those eyes of Freddie Lingren is coming to the fore here tonight. Desperately wants to make sure he's in the medals. That's uh, looking good. He's got two inside gates to come to complete his uh, five rides in the qualifying here this evening before the semi-finals but he's looking set for that that's for sure 
Heat number 12, everybody will have had three rides at the completion of this particular race. Uh, Schmarzik looking for more points here. He's on the inside. Red helmet colour. Andre Lebedev's gate number two in blue. Jan Kvet, what a night he's having. Gate three in white. And likewise, Dominic Cabrera off the outside in yellow. So the world champion here. A little bit of pressure, you would suggest. Um, we've seen him do it many, many times, of course. He doesn't tend to panic. But nonetheless, two points from two rides. He'll be looking to get to the front as soon as possible. Yeah, change of bike here for Lebedev. He's made a decent start in his previous race and he ate off the inside gate, but he just got beat up. And it was a tough race, Lambert Bewley Frick, but uh, would have expected a little bit more from himself, I think. So he's having a little change of equipment. He's got gate two, which is working well tonight. So he'll be looking to utilize it now. Here we go then. Indeed he is, Kubera now back into second place, Marzlik chopping to the inside, but Kubera wrote, uh, read that, excuse me, absolutely perfectly, Marzlik had to pull a huge locker there, and uh, for the world champion, well he's relegated to third base, but Jan Kubek, this is a dreamland for Jan Kubek. stunning opening lap, committed to the outside, look at the speed he had down the back straight on the opening lap, and uh, clearly delighted with his performance so far. You can't deny him. He's in top form tonight. Three points for Jan Kvek out in front. Dominic Cabrera coming through into second place. Two points there. Bartosz Marzlik struggling tonight. One point in third place. So here's uh, the picture after three rides each. Kvek and Dudek, Kubera all on eight points. Freddie Lindgren, Jack Holder on seven. Dan Bewley, Leon Madsen on six. And Robert Lambert, they're in eighth place right now on five points. That's your top eight after three rides each. And Bartosz Schmarslik, just three points, some three outings under pressure. Well, Jan Kvet, what can you say about this? This has been absolutely terrific for him tonight. What I can say is he's had back-to-back -back wins. He's leading the Grand Prix on eight points. He goes straight to the outside, exactly as he did in his last race. I honestly thought he could perhaps get himself into second place past Lebedev's, but look at the speed he's got. Mm. I mean, Bartosz Schmarzlik, obviously, no slouch. He didn't. Uh, he had no idea he was coming. Then he says, OK, if that's, if that's what works, I'll go to the outside. But he's never going to be able to answer Kvek because Kvek just keeps nudging it out there to the fence oh. doesn't phrase him at all the front wheels in the air every corner and then Sparzik comes under pressure for Kubera. You can see Kubera there looking across. It's awfully tight later on in the race when Sparzik decides to cut back. And Kubera pins it right down on the line. This might be coming where now Sparzik turns his attention to the inside. But uh, this is where Kubera pins him down and gets awfully close here. That could have been a nasty moment. Indeed, but Kubera was smart there. He knew that um, uh, Sparzik was going to come back at him, but uh, he closed the door. But for that man, Really is uh, running out of his skin tonight, committing to the brilliant. outside, and it is brilliant. Yeah, good to see. Fair play to him. So, um, uh, Jan Kvek having a great night so far. But, uh, well, uh, we've got a moment. Let's get some reaction. Abby is going to be joined by Jack Holder. Jack, you look committed to getting that last qualifying spot for next year. Yeah, exactly. Um, not too worried about that, you know, I just want to, um, I've had a few, you know, really poor performances in the Grand Prix, it's not like myself, so, um, yeah, I just want to get back to doing what I do, and, um, yeah, at the moment, everything's going to plan. You look back to normal, but what would you put the poor performances down to? If I could tell you, uh, if I knew, I would tell you. Um, just one of those things, you know, Speedway, and you go, people go through these patches, and, um, it's hard to get out of, I'll, I'll say that, but um, yeah, you know, I just keep keep doing what I'm doing, plenty of practice, logging me laps, and um, just, yeah, just keep doing what I love. Well, it looks like you're loving it out there. Well done, Jack. Thanks for chatting, and good luck for the rest of the evening. Thank you. Right to you, guys. Thanks very much, Abby. Yeah, good to see Jack Holder on form. He's uh, started the season with a win in Croatia, of course. Really did look like uh, he meant business, but uh, unfortunately just lost some form at a critical stage of the season. But no doubt uh, is uh, battling hard tonight and riding. That last uh, win will really give him uh, a boost of confidence with uh, a couple of rides to come. 
Pięć punktów Robert Lambert to na razie czołowa ósemka. So the gate success now after three rides each, just one win from the inside there. Four well, wins from gate number two, five race wins from gate three and two from the outside gate so far this evening. It's going to be very interesting to see how that works out as we go towards the semi-finals. Not going to be straightforward. Um, but traditionally, the inside gate has proved to be successful, but so far, after 12 heats, just one race win, Chris. Uh, yeah, tough, tough from the inside. Gate two is, is so dominant over gate one at the moment. That's the biggest problem for anybody coming off the inside gate. But uh, interesting to hear from Jack Holder there. I'm sure he is a little concerned about finding an automatic spot after tonight and getting into the top six. So, uh, track rating going on there after heat number 12. And uh, Jack Holder going along well. We, uh, we've been talking about him quite a lot, but uh, Jankovic uh, warrants a mention here because he's having a fabulous night of speedway. Patrick Dudek there as well. So three riders on eight points so far. But some... Um, uh, they're going along very nicely indeed. Heat number 12, we can uh, have a look at again here from the drone. So um, here we go. Heat number 12. Yeah, heat 12, just another fabulous race that we've seen so far this evening. And Bartosz Marzik around the inside. I think he would have thought, yeah, I've got this one covered. Jankovic had other ideas. He generated so much speed going to the outside. Dealt with uh, Kubera straight away before he even got to the corner. Just went straight out there a little bit akin to uh, Freddie Lindgren earlier on tonight and Smarslik has to battle so hard in this race he, uh, he just hasn't really settled down with the setup with the bike even when he rides out in the dirt the bike not reacting as good as uh, Kovec's super move there to get up the inside and he roars straight across the front of Kubera but Kubera is riding well tonight it really is the bike's working nicely for him as well just finds that extra grip on the inside. Smarzik, he's gone across the track, he's in the slick, he's in the middle of the track, not working for him. Kubera does all the right thing there, but it was a brave move because Smarzik almost collected him. Well, there's no doubt that Smarzik, if he'd been a lesser rider, would have just clouted him. Yeah, no and, question. Uh, and he really did have to pull a huge locker to avoid him. But Kubera, you're absolutely right, Chris. His bike's working better than Bartosz Smarzik because it's getting him some more grip coming off the corner, as I say, three riders, uh, three points for Bartosz Smarzik, and so he's got plenty of work to do with a couple of heats to come. So uh, while we are waiting for heat number 13, let's uh, just look back on the action we've seen so far tonight. So there we go. Just uh, a look back at uh, what we've seen so far. There's the standings after everybody's had three outings so far. So top three there on eight points. Freddie Lingham going along nicely. So is Holder. Dan Beauty just slipping up last time, but six points is still a solid start. Madsen, Lambert there also with a bit of work to do. But uh, I think uh, the surprise so far for everybody here tonight is Bartosz Smarzik. Just the three points from three rides so far. We would have expected more than that. I think he would have done as well, I think. And uh, as you rightly said, Chris, he just doesn't quite uh, have settled down and, uh, as well as he would have done. He's got two rides to come, of course, but uh, he will probably need to win both of them to be absolutely certain of going further tonight. And he will want to. He's a proud man. He's a racer. He's a winner. And uh, he won't want to not make the semi-final for the second time this season of course he didn't get into the semis in Cardiff earlier this year so the next four heats 
Peak number 13 with Kubera, Yuli, Matson, and Patrick Dudek. That is a line-up tonight. Matze Janowski, Bartosz Marsley, Robert Lambert, Simon Wozniak, heat number 14. Max Fricks out in heat 15 with Huckenbeck, Jan Kovec, what a night. Martin Vashlit looking for a bit more as well there in heat 15. Heat 16 is Lingren, Nielsen and Lebedevs. And um, there's no doubt that Jack Holder going from gate four in heat 16 will be looking to add to his seven points so far this evening. Mexican wave going round. It's uh, a celebration time, of course. It's the end of the season and uh, everybody in a great mood, no doubt about that. There's a partisan crowd at the moment. They're getting right behind Patrick Dudek, uh, the world champion. He may gate crash the party, but uh, he is going to have to up his game. Yeah, he will be looking to do so, but uh, always a fabulous atmosphere here in, in Torren. It's uh, the fans flock here from all the Speedway nations. And it is, as you rightly say, a partisan crowd who are enjoying themselves tonight, and I'm sure they will be long into the night. Yeah, after qualifying, just sort of uh, floating around the paddock, there is people from all nations, you're right, meeting people they haven't seen for some considerable time. So riders are ready to go here for heat number 13. Track is uh, just uh, receiving uh, a last... Uh, bit of grading now. Difficult to understand exactly what's happened to Smarslik so far this evening because today earlier on in qualifying he was he was fast, he was fastest, he uh, had the choice of positions, he took 13, he felt that was the way to go so everything going for him, doing everything right and all of a sudden tonight can't really find the lines, bike not really reacting how he would like it to. No and uh, all I would say about that is the track is quite different tonight than it was earlier today. Yep. And uh, as a consequence, that draw, uh, going for the uh, number 13 draw, hasn't quite worked out to his liking. Um, but uh, you wouldn't put it past him. But it isn't vastly different to the SGP2 last night, and he was here watching that, taking a lot of notice. So you would have thought he would have known what to expect. Yes, can't disagree with that. So uh, I'm sure they've got... Uh, they're thinking caps on down in the pit area. Now, riders are coming out now for uh, the upcoming race here, heat number 13. Good looking lineup, this. Really looking forward to it. Should be quite a uh, tear up, that's for sure. Dan Bewley, who failed to score last time for the first time, he was unbeaten. Still got six points, of course, so no panic there from him. But uh, he'll be looking to get amongst the points, of course. But uh, he's got three other riders that are in really good form tonight. So. And in particular, Cabrera's going very well tonight, and that's refreshing to see. He has uh, got that bike working absolutely spot on, that's for sure. So riders are arriving at tapes for the next race. That man as well, Patrick Dudek. This, yes, this uh, on uh, the form of tonight, this is a terrific lineup. Cabrera on the inside in the red helmet colour. Dan Beauty, gate number two in blue. Leon Madsen, gate three in white. And Patrick Dudek goes from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Got to say, uh, tough one to call this, you know. Really is. <laughs> yeah, it's a competitive race. Yeah. And, uh, Dominic Cabrera on the inside. Dan Beauty's got what has been one of the favoured gates so far. Uh, gate number two. But Cabrera is going to be happy to have sort of, seems like he's quashed that Polish Grand Prix hoodoo because yeah. he did didn't perform particularly well in uh, Warsaw, Gorzhov, or Wroclaw really struggled in those yeah. rounds. Yeah, if he'd just been able to put in a slightly better performance in one of those, then the uh, top six would have been uh, his, but uh, it's been tough. And when the way uh, Jack Holder's going this evening, it's looking like it could well be out of his reach here tonight, and he will have to go to part of it next week to try and get in the top four to be back in 2025. Heat number 13. Riders coming forward now with 10 seconds to go. They're all in line. Gate number one hasn't been working very well so far. Can Kubera buck the trend? He's there now. Green light is on, tapes up, away we go. Kubera's oh, made a lovely start off the inside. He fires himself to the front. Bewley's in the middle of the track, it's tight there. Can he come around the outside? Not quite because Kubera really is it. Oh, oh yeah. Got in. And uh, Patrick Dudek High speed. just um, uh, diving through there. And uh, Dan Beauty was really left with no, no option no. but to actually bail off the bike. Uh, Patrick Dudek, he is uh, in danger of being thrown out of the race here. Yeah, it's in grave danger because uh, I really believe he will have to go out of the race. And just uh, 
sitting down. It was a, it was a, a relatively simple crash, but at very high speed. So uh, indeed it was. So we'll see it again. Talk us through it. Yeah, Billy's drifted across the track. Dudek's cut back. He's straight lining up the inside, but he's got to run in wide. Uh, because Kubera has already got there into the corner. It's a difficult moment for Dudek because he's fully committed to the move, but he can't ride in maybe as narrow as ordinarily he would have chosen to because he would have ran in to the back of Kubera, of course. But I've got to say, he really hasn't left Dan Bewley with any option. It will be harsh on Dan if he goes for that one. Yeah. Racing incident, no malice in it. You can understand what uh, Dudek was trying to achieve. Of Taking course you down. can. Yeah. But he has clipped him, and as a consequence, uh, Bewley had to get off the motorbike. No decision yet by the referee, Alexander Latosinski. Blue, uh, blue exclusion light on. No, now, wrong. I, Sorry. I, 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 I <laughs> failed... Just simply wrong. I, I can't understand it. Um, I've actually w witnessed a couple of uh, pretty poor decisions in recent weeks <laughs> by referees, and that, that's right up there. Yeah. That's, what on uh, earth was Dan Bewley meant to do? Well, he's, he's actually straightened the bike up just just because Dudek's there. He's come through a million miles an hour. That's, uh, I'm sure if that message has been relayed to Dan now as he sits on the track waiting to get up, he will be shocked, shocked at that. I think we all are a little bit. Patrick Dudek, of course, didn't mean to take him out, but unfortunately it was uh, one of those situations where he um, uh, was running in there, but uh, Dan Bewley has been taken out of the race. You can hear the reaction. It's uh, not, uh, not one that uh, many people are agreeing with there, but um, uh, Dan Bewley, after failing to score in his previous race, that'll mean two zeros now. And, uh, he's he shaking has, uh, his head. He's, he's yeah, he can't quite shocked. believe what's yeah, happened there because yeah. as, uh, he had really no option but to actually get off the bike, as you yeah. say. He actually straightened the bike up to because he was aware that Dudek was just going to run in the side of him. Yeah, you can't straighten the bike up at that point in the corner and get away with it. You have you have to go down. If he hadn't have straightened the bike up, he was going down anyway. So Dudek, there's no malice in it, and and it was the fact that he he'd, he'd almost overcommitted to the uh, overtaking manoeuvre, and then of course Kubera was there, so he had to ride wide. And that's at that point when Dan Bewley then had to bail out. But uh, no, could, poor decision. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But could Patrick Dudek have done anything slightly different there? Uh, shut the throttle off and not gone in quite so hard. OK. <laughs> OK, <laughs> just, just decided to keep it around the kerb on the inside of Kubera, but he would have had to have slowed down to have done that. OK, all right. Well, I'm um, uh, just playing devil's advocate. But uh, Dan Bewley clearly not happy with the decision. And uh, I think there's uh, one or two other people that are in agreement with that. Patrick Dudek has had a reprieve there. And uh, he's had a good night so far. And he's going to be back in the rerun. He sits on eight points. He's only dropped one point tonight. But for Dan Bewley, who is on the phone, there's the referee. I'm not sure how the referee could be explaining this one to him. Well, he clearly had a thought process. And um, uh, very rarely do we see a referee change his mind. Um, one rider will have to be excluded as a consequence of that, but uh, I would be very surprised indeed if uh, Alexander Latosinski changes his mind here. Um, uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Dave Dan Bewley has uh, stated his case, but unfortunately, um, uh, as we see so very often, um, uh, it's uh, not going to change the decision. So Dan Bewley, with one ride to go, six points, he's had two wins, so possibly a second place with two wins in his last ride would be enough. But uh, there's no doubt that that puts him under a bit of unnecessary pressure. 19, gate two. He has got Smarjlik, who will also be needing points. Yeah, but um, uh, absolutely. But uh, he can do it. But uh, after starting uh, tonight in such fine fashion, all of a sudden, it's um, uh, not looking quite as rosy for Dan Bewley, who was looking really good tonight. There's no doubt about that. So a uh, little bit of running repairs here for the air fence. The airbag is having to be replaced. So while we've got a delay, let's, uh, let's catch up with the man. Um, uh, Abby is with Dan Bewley. Dan, fair to say, shocked on that referee decision? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen the replay, but as far as I'm concerned, uh... Yeah, he was riding straight through me. The ref said there was no contact, but uh, yeah, maybe I should have just waited for him to clean us both out and we'd both be dead over the airbag. But uh, yeah, I didn't, whatever. We got one more race, three points, get in the semi and be good. 
Dan, how do you uh, sort of calm your mindset? Because, like you said, you had nowhere to go there. So it's um, quite an extraordinary decision. But like you say, you've got another heat to go. Oh, I don't know. So this is what it is. Move on. Next race. Dan, thanks for chatting. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I, I tell you what, some riders in the past, obviously he made his case and clearly is unhappy about it, but uh, he knows that he's not going to change it now. He stated his case to the referee. He's got one more ride, needs to win it. Yeah, he does. He's put him under unnecessary pressure, but uh, totally disagree with what the referee has then explained to him. I believe there was some contact. I believe there would have been an awful lot more if Dan Bewley hadn't have stood the bike up and got out of his way. Yeah, and uh, it was only the awareness of Dan Bewley uh, that made the accident much less. Yes. than it possibly would have been. So, OK, well, a bit of controversy there in uh, heat number 13. We're having a bit of everything, but uh, we are having a slightly extended delay because the airbag was punctured by Dan Bewley's bikes going into the air fence. It looks like it's uh, repaired now, and uh, we will see the riders emerge for the second time for heat number 13. It will just be the three of them. So it was a very competitive lineup, that's for sure. And uh, Dominic Kubera had got away very nicely initially. It was a big move by Patrick Dudek down the inside. And I think, oh, well, I know he feels a touch fortunate there as he rides back round for heat number 13. He would have ridden round towards the, uh, the lights on the side of the track with one eye on them as you do as a rider, thinking, I think I may have been a naughty boy there. Yeah, there we go. So, um... Uh, Riders now just uh, making their way back to the tapes. Leon Madsen coming forward just gently now. Cabrera, who, uh, like uh, Patrick Dudek, is having a terrific night so far. So Cabrera goes from the inside in the red helmet colour. Dan Bewley's excluded, so no rider in gate number two. Gate three in white is Leon Madsen, and Patrick Dudek goes from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Will uh, Dudek do something similar here with a turn back down the inside? Because uh, Cabrera looks like he's uh, really got himself uh, fired up tonight sharp away from the tapes and the bike is working nicely as well Leon Madsen well he's been in the thick of the action so far this evening he's had a win a second and a third but so uh, you wouldn't put it past him if he gets his nose in front here that he could pick up his second win of the night no question Kubera is riding nicely I won't take that away from him but I've got to say bike wise it is uh, finding traction he can ride around the inside he, he hasn't had to take any big risks so far today Dudek will find he's got a little bit more room now with uh, Dan Bewley missing from gate two so when that first turn opens up he'll have a little less traffic absolutely so, um, uh, just under 30 seconds to go before riders have to be up at tapes. They tend to see that clock and they look at that clock, so um, uh, they will utilise the time as much as they possibly can. Certainly Leon, that's in the gate number three. He comes forward now with just 10 seconds to go. Heat number 13, second time of asking, just the three of them. Dan Bewley will be a touch frustrated, sat back in the pits, that's for sure. Here we go then, green lights on, away we go, Cabrera's nailed it again. He fires himself to the front, hugs the inside, Madsen goes very wide indeed there, he's out of control. Oh, oh my goodness gracious me, oh. he was out of control. Fortunately, had the fence had slowed him down quite a bit by the time he got off, but it was a nasty one. Yeah, just got so much grip right out wide there, climbed up the air it's fence too initially. Far. It's too far. And uh, just uh, elected to go that route, and it didn't prove to be the right decision. So concern for Madsen, who is literally right by the pit gate, halfway down the back straight. And uh, the red lights have come on immediately, of course. I uh, hope he's OK. I think he is. I think he is, but uh, you could say... I did actually say he's out of control, and uh, so it proved to be. Just couldn't... He couldn't uh, quite hang on to the bike. Yeah, he'd, he'd had a look on the way to the corner and said, OK, Dudek's made it with me. I'll stop that run. I'll go to the outside. The bike's run right up the fence. It's actually gone into the fence with that front wheel. We can see it's probably a better angle here. It's on the berm. Then the front wheel's just into the fence. Stopped the bike completely. It did slow him down before he actually went over the handlebars. And we are hearing that he is, of course, the course for the stoppage. He is disqualified, but a really nasty moment. Just, I thought he, at one point there it looked like he might be able to ride it out, but the front wheel grab sends him over the handlebars. And uh, we do hope it, that he's OK. Second time it lifts there, that's the problem. Yeah, and it buries right the front wheel. Stride, it buries the front wheel and the Burma dirt right up by the kickboard there. It's thrown clear, he's out of the race, so there's just the two of them now.
Cabrera having to make his way. There's less than a minute to go, so these boys have got to get the hurry up on here. This uh, heat number 13 is taking quite some considerable time. Yeah, the, the race director and the local track staff now have to, uh, I think, do a little bit of talking because that, that dirt line now is literally on the fence. And if you're going to use it, particularly around the first turn on the opening lap, you, you, you're basically taking your life into your hands. It takes a brave man to do it. So they're going to have to decide whether they leave it, let the dirt line disappear naturally, or whether they bring it back down a little bit. And Dominic Kubera, he's going to move on to 11 points. What a night. He's in the semi-finals comfortably now with a race to come. And uh, he had to work hard there because uh, Patrick Dudek, as you said, with no pressure behind, chased him hard for a couple of laps and then elected to go for the big uh, run round the outside. But Cabrera held firm. Three points for him. Patrick Dudek back in second place. Two points. Dan Bewley and Leon Madsen weren't in the race, so they both failed to score there in Heat 13. Dudek, no real damage done in truth. He's now on to 10 points, but... Uh, Dominic Kubera, well, this is uh, a terrific night so far for him. Yeah, f fascinating to see just how much he's improved, uh, particularly in Poland, because although we know he rides very well in Poland, he has had three poor rounds, and uh, he's just got the setup absolutely dialed in tonight. Bike coming off the start, off the inside gate for the third time tonight, working really nicely for him. And he had that covered because he kept covering the exit to the corner. So however hard Dudek tried to make a long straight up the inside, couldn't get a run on him. And when Dudek did go to the outside, the uh, dirt line proving a little bit too far and, and, and quite frankly, a little bit too frightening, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It um, uh, was uh, spectacular stuff, that's for sure. Pleased to see him back in the pits on his feet. So Matej Janowski in heat number 14 goes from the inside in the red helmet colour. Bartosz Marslik needs a win. Gate number two in blue. Robert Lambert out of gate number three in white. And uh, Simon Wozniak going from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Robert Lambert working hard but hasn't quite got to the front so far this evening. Bartosz Marslik is going to be fighting for his life here. This is again potentially another terrific... Terrific race, and also Matt Sejanowski not having a great night. He sits on four points, so these guys are all looking for their first win tonight. Yeah, that's. I was just about to say that to win here for any of these guys will give them all a chance of uh, a decent ride in their last one, making it into the semi-finals. But Smarslik, he's under pressure here. You know, he doesn't want this season to, to sort of fizzle out in the last round, having already won the championship. He wants to to go on and win another round here in Poland, I'm sure. So drama once again here in the Marion Rose Arena, no doubt about that. Simon Wozniak reacting really brilliantly there. Got to say, you've got to give him credit. He's going to be thrown out of the race, unfortunately, but crikey, that could have been so much worse if he'd yeah. tried to hang on to it. Yeah, I think he would have collected Bartosz Smarzlik as they come into the corner, Lambert's leading. Janoski there, Smarzlik's around the outside in blue. And uh, this is Wozniak on the inside in yellow. He's at the back, he's just making his way past their bike does grab i don't know if maybe something went over the start line yeah yeah chain maybe line. yeah i don't know if he he is disqualified but I, I can't make my mind up whether he put it down because it was uh, launching him into the corner towards smarslick it's almost like the front wheel washed out underneath him didn't it, it? and it's it just really strange literally strange. planted him in there it's that greasy surface i think but uh, just as he lifts, as the front wheel comes down, Chris, it just washes out underneath him. I think the bike has caught one of the ruts in the start line sideways there. It lifts. It's just washed out underneath him and chucked him over the handlebars. Yeah, I think it has. Really uh, awkward fall. Please don't put too much more water on the track, that I would suggest. But uh, Simon was now up and about and makes his way back to the pits. It hasn't been a great evening for him. He's been trying awfully hard, but uh, he's excluded here in heat number 14. Second chance here for Bar to Smarslik, who was not at the front and in truth not looking, not looking like he was going but. to either so that bike just not quite working as well as he would like it was a stunning start from gate three from Lambert I mean they must have tweaked the bike because it absolutely flew into the first corner yeah it was a great reaction from Lambert off gate three but Smarslik actually had the slowest reaction of all four of them in that one Matt Zianowski just tweaking his bike there. Looks like he's uh, changing the ignition timing, trying to find a bit more grip. 
it's cold out there, it's greasy, so you're getting lots of wheel spin, and you need to calm the engines down to try and find a little bit more traction so you can generate the speed. It's a funny old game speedway, isn't it? Because the riders, they spend a lot of money uh, investing in the fastest engines they possibly can, and then spend most of their time trying to slow them down. <laughs> yeah, very difficult to explain to the layman, that one. Uh, good to see Ben Cook. Mm, He's on yeah. the left of uh, Jack Holder there. Ben actually had a really nasty fall at uh, Sheffield um, uh, just a week or two ago and uh, was uh, knocked out stone cold. And there was some concern for him for some time. So really pleased to see young uh, Ben Cook here. Very good friends, of course, with Jack Holder. Riders coming back out here now. And uh, Robert Lambert is up at tapes already. So uh, Bartosz Marsley also making his way round. So um, uh, Simon Weschnek obviously was excluded there. We're waiting for Matze Janowski to emerge as well. He had a last uh, minute change to his setup as he enters the arena. But uh, we reiterate, there's the uh, positions right now after 14 races. Um, uh, and it's obvious to see with Smarslik in 12th place right now. This is an extremely important race for him. But uh, as we said earlier on, all of these riders are needing a big race here, that's for sure. So the lineup for you, second time around, is Janowski on the inside in red, Bartosz Smarslik, gate number two in blue, Robert Lambert, gate three there in white, and uh, Simon Wozniak off the outside. There's no rider there because he's uh, been excluded. Well, three crashes in the last two heats. That's enough of that, lads. Let's get on with the racing. Because as Lambert had got to the front, I don't think Smarsley had the speed there to pass him. And once again, Bartosz Smarsley, like so many times this year, having to work overtime to win races in the Grand Prix. First win of the night, three points for him. Doubles his score, moves on to six. Two points for Robert Lambert. Matt Janowski back in third. Simon Wozniak fails to score because he was excluded. So Robert Lambert hasn't won a race so far this evening. He's on seven points, but uh, Crikey is working hard for them. He is working very hard. And Smarslik, super start from him there from gate two. Quite goes forward, but it doesn't have the speed. He's doubled his score. He's won his first race there. Janowski almost slams in to the back of Robert Lambert. I thought we were going to have another crash in this race. Here's just uh, bike just drives there. Front wheels on the curb. Bike drives. I tell you what, does really well to stay on. That could have been a nasty one. He could have high sided the bike. Yep. Quite nicely coming off turn two on the opening lap. Robert Lambert frustrated in this race. Definitely, he's got the bike bolt up right there. He's had to put the brakes on. As Bartosz Smarzik, as you rightly say, riding so defensively. If you look down the straights where he's riding, he's riding through gate two. I mean, that's far too narrow. Yeah, and, uh, but he had no choice because he just wasn't generating enough speed. Too much wheel spin there. And uh, when that is the case, you just can't get the bike off the corner. So still work to be done there. Um, uh, there's no doubt he's not going to win if the bike uh, performs like that. Just not quick enough. Riders uh, are going better than him tonight. But uh, you know that they will roll their sleeves up and keep plugging away at it. So heat number 15, Max Vick on the inside in red. Kai Hukabek, gate two in blue. Jan Kavec, what a night for him. Gate three in white and Martin Vasilik on a second bike here. He's on the outside in the yellow helmet colour. I fancied Martin tonight. I thought he would really tear it up. But uh, so far, four points from three outings. He's finding it tough here this evening. Uh, that outside gate, will he be able to produce something? Because Jan Kovec, you know, I don't know if the dirt's gone too wide. We have seen him utilising it brilliantly. I, I think he will. Even even Jan will concede that maybe that's a, <laughs> a step too far right now. It could come back after the track raid. We'll see. But uh, didn't quite manage to get there. And Kai Hukenbeck with a stunning start from gate number two. Picks up points for the first time this evening, and uh, he's had a difficult time. He is the winner of heat number 15. Good effort from Vasilik, but uh, points still hard to come by. Ryan is really having to work very hard indeed. Hukabek out in front, three points. Martin Vasilik back in second place, two for him. Max Frick in third one, and Jan Kovec misses out for the first time tonight. Heat number 16, Kai Hukabek just reflecting on what might have been tonight, because uh, that was more like it from him, but... Uh, too little, too late, I would suggest. Freddie Lingwin's on the inside in the red helmet colour. Kim Nielsen out of gate number two in blue. Andre Lebedev's not a great night for him. He's out of gate number three in white. And Jack Holder 
Going along nicely. Had a good win last time out. He's off the outside in yellow. But uh, there's no question that Freddie Lingwood is already ready. Look how keen he is. He's like a teenager <laughs> yeah. out there for the first time. Freddie's riding well. Really has turned on the style this evening. Two wins. Considering he very nearly T-boned um, uh, Jack Holder at the end of the back straight opening lap. He has recovered brilliantly there to come through in the second place to get the better of Freddie Lingren. Dramatic stuff here in the Marion Rose Arena tonight. Can't take your night, uh, eyes off of it. Breathtaking stuff. Jack Holder, second winner of the night, three points for him. Lebedev's in second place, two points. Freddie Lingren back in third, one for him. And Kim Nielsen, not a great night for him, failing to score there. Here's the position after everybody's had four outings. Cabrera leads the way on 11. Holder and Dudek on 10. Then there's a gap to Quebec on 8. Freddie Lingwood now moving on to 8. Lambert on 7. Dan Bewley on 6. So is Leon Madsen. Look at those riders on 6 points. Vashlik, Smarslik, Madsen and Bewley. Big races to come, that's for sure. Good race this. Jack Holder back to his best. Yeah, I, uh, it was a shocking moment at the end of the straight on the opening lap. We need to see that again. It was a close call into the corner, but Jack Holder, as you say, back to his best. Bike working good there. Leredev's up the inside. Bike grabs there, I tell you what. He actually does well to get that under control as quickly as he does because he does manage to miss Jack Holder. Unfortunately for him, the gap has opened up with Lindgren deciding to take a uh, quite a wide entry into the corner, but that was a real moment for Lebedev. Uh, if Jack Holder had seen that coming, he'd have been holding his breath. Indeed. And uh, Andre Lebedev somehow recovers here after that uh, shocking incident early on in the race. He keeps his composure. Bike is actually working quite nicely there. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we talk about it a lot, Kelvin. You know, these guys, they, as the night goes on, the track's got slick, the dirt line's gone really wide, almost too far to use. Freddie Lindgren sticks at it, but a uh, brave man to do so. But, um, you know, with these brave setups, we see things like what Lebedev's happened there at the end of the straight. You know, the bike just grabs on him. It's because of how the bikes are, it's because of how the setup is, and uh, that was a big moment. Yeah, it was indeed. So Jack Holder on 10 points, comfortably through, looking like a uh, Grand Prix rider for 2025 now. Really is going uh, along very nicely indeed. The gold greatest of all So um, uh, we'll get some more reaction now. We've got uh, Greg Hancock and Abby Stevens down in the pits area for us. Greg, well, that dirt line, it is out wide. It is out wide, and I couldn't help but listen to what the commentators were just saying there, too. And the guys who got the bike set up so much for a wheel spin, you know, trying to, because there's so much water still, and then suddenly that wheel spin catches up with a little bit of drive material right at mid straight, a little bit of grip, and they get all this maximum wheel spin to maximum traction. It launches, which you saw Seaman Volzniak do as well. Yes. So it's, uh, it is hard to get the perfect combination in these conditions, and, uh, you know, you got to be ready for anything. It was a heart in your mouth moment there with Andre Lebedev as well. He nearly just wiped out Jack Holder. Yeah, it was almost like bowling. It could have eat, right there could have cleaned out three guys easy, and uh, it's just lucky that he saved. I mean, that's skill too. You know, the kid knows what he's doing, and yeah. he managed to avoid both guys. And uh, yeah, it was exciting. So was that what happened with Wozniak? Um, because we're having thoughts uh, down here in the pits as well about did he have to lay the bike down because he was going to go into Schmarslick, or was it exactly what you're saying about this kind of wheel? spin and keeping the bike under control. Well, that's what happened that caused that moment. But what happened for him, it looked like his forks broke or something. He came down with so much force on the front wheel trying to correct it. It looked like something broke and maybe bottomed out, causing him to wash out. But it actually was just so much force that I think the, the maybe the mud guard did hit the tire and just forced him to lose, you know, all, uh, yeah, all control of the front wheel and went down. But um, luckily, he's okay. Well, this track, we said it, and you said it on your track walk, that it produces a load of lines. We've still got um, more heats remaining. Greg, thanks so much for chatting. Back to you. Yeah, thank you, Abby. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, because of the uh, slick conditions, bike setups do get extreme, and that's why they are very unpredictable at times. It is uh, dramatic to watch. But uh, I'll tell you what, not always comfortable to ride on, that's for sure. He seemed to enjoy his racing a lot, so 
yeah, I think he can, can keep going and win many, many, many titles. So, um, uh, four races to come. We'll take a look at the lineups. There's a position after everybody's had four outings. As I say, Donald Cabrera leading the Grand Prix. Jack Holder back to his uh, very best here this evening. Super stuff from him. Patrick Dudek, possibly a touch fortunate to be on 10 points. But uh, Freddie Lingren battling hard. And uh, Robert Lambert, likewise, is on seven points there. But, um, uh, Certainly Robert Lambert is uh, keeping pace with uh, Freddie Lindgren, so silver medal right now is uh, Robert Lambert, because he's hanging tough here tonight. We will be able to take uh, a look back at uh, heat number 15. Kubera, what a night he's having, but um, uh, before we get on with the action again, let's take a look at... Uh, Heat number 15 for the uh, for the second time. Yeah, heat 15, Kai Hülkenberg, superstar off gate two, gets his first race win, in fact, first points of the night. But this one, for me, about Martin Vashlik having to work super hard, doesn't really know where to ride. You can see Jan Kvek, unfortunately for him there, after a super start to light, he is at the back. But uh, Vashlik straight through the middle there, he's quite hard on Max Frick, has to block pass him, ride right in front of him. Max Frick, of course, not giving up. And he has to go around the outside. I don't think it's a place he particularly wants to be, but he is finding a little bit more speed on the straights to stay ahead of Jan Kvek in the white crash helmet there. But a super ride from uh, Kai Hülkebeck. Nice to see him winning a race. And uh, Martin Vashlik, another second place, does give him a chance with one ride to come. But uh, Jan Kvek hasn't made a semi-final stage this year. I'd love to see him do it tonight. Yeah, when well, he's out in the next race off of gate number four, it's uh, a tough race as well. He's looking like he is set to do it, and uh, on eight points so far, that might be enough, actually, with two race wins and a second place. He might not need to uh, add to it, but uh, time will tell. Of course, he will want to, but um, there's no doubt that heat number 17, we'll go through that a little later, is an exciting one to look forward to. Here we see the uh, best race winning times so far this evening. And Bewley, Jack Holder, Leon Madsen, Freddie Lindgren, Kubera there. Patrick Dudek, Bartos Smarslik actually, although he didn't look particularly quick, he's on uh, the top eight, so uh, he uh, makes his way into there. So uh, we we'll also have uh, an opportunity to look at uh, the gate success um, uh, so far this evening after everybody's had four rides. This gives a more sort of pic clearer picture of exactly what's going on. Inside gate not working well tonight, only two wins from there, six out of gate number two. Five wins from gate three and only three from the outside so far tonight. Unusual to see the middle two gates producing so much, um, so many wins. And there's the point scored from the representative gates 22, 30, 21, and 22 on the outside. So, um, uh, not going to be easy to know exactly what way to go. I think gate two is going to be favorable um, when we go to the semi finals. Water bowels are coming out again. So uh, clearly the uh, the plan to put water on the track is continuing. I mm. don't think it's helping. I think that is actually uh, leading to riders making really, really um, uh, dramatic setups to the bike. I'm not in agreement with it. I'm sorry. There are setups and mistakes as well. The outside has been ripped up again. They have come down a little bit further, but it still means that the dirt, by the time two or three riders have used it, is right out there on the fence. So riders just uh, preparing themselves for heat number 17. Robert Lambert uh, would dearly love to have a win. He's, uh, he's on seven points, but hasn't quite managed to get his nose in front. Freddie Lindgren there, he's on eight points. So the uh, race for silver and bronze tonight is going the way for Robert Lambert so far. And of course, Jack Holder is uh, almost certainly going to be back in the series in 2025 as a consequence of scoring 10 points so far this evening having a really good night actually uh, jack holder let's have a look at uh, the final qualifying heats before the semi-finals for you heat 17 dudek lambert holder and kovek big line up that freddie lingren there out in heat 18 with janowski kubera max frick kai hilkenbeck dan bewley bartos smarslik and kim nielsen and heat number 19 bewley and smarslik looking for a win there 
you would suggest. And heat number 20, Martin Vasilik, Leon Madsen, Simon Wozniak and Andre Lebedev. Vasilik and Leon Madsen looking for more as well to force their way into the top eight and into the semi-finals. Uh, happy to report that the water's only gone on the outside half of the track, so that's good news. I, don't I like that. that that's that. more, more sensible, I think, because um, uh, it is quite greasy and we've seen riders just struggling with it a touch tonight. Track uh, being worked hard on. Of course, it's had a lot of action in the last couple of days with the SGP2 qualifying and Grand Prix yesterday. Qualifying, of course, this afternoon for the senior riders as well. So uh, it is... Uh, it is a lot to ask of a track to uh, you know, hold up over two days with uh, so much uh, track action. And we've had conversations with how hard the bikes rev and they tear away at the track and they actually wear the track significantly more than back, say, 10 years ago. Yeah, and I've got a feeling that that's why we saw quite a bit of water constantly going down last night for SGP2. I think it was to protect the, uh, the track surface, make sure it doesn't rut up or get too many holes in it. And it has protected. It. it was tough on the lads, you know, they're the young, inexperienced guys uh, looking to conclude a championship, so it wasn't ideal for them, but um, look, can't argue with the racing, the racing's been super, we lost its way a little bit in that last block, but it's been, uh, been fantastic so far tonight. A little word for Dan Bewley, he must be frustrated, two race wins, looked fantastic, ran a last and then got that uh, very frustrating exclusion, which uh, I've got to say I can't agree with. Well, he's out in heat number 19, but he's got a certain uh, Bartosz Marslik out there with him. And uh, the gates, they are on the best gates, though. They are on gates two and three. That could prove to be helpful for them, but um, uh, we'll get to that in a couple of races' time because riders are back out on track here for the resumption of racing in heat number 17. And, of course, Patrick Dudek riding with the number one draw tonight. Of course, he comes out for a, a freshly prepared track every time and uh, so far it's proved to be um, a successful night for Patrick, sits on 10 points and we've got two teammates here on the inside two gates, they represent Torren in the extra league going head to head here, it's an individual speedway so um, uh, very different attitude to the race now and a super looking line up this one, heat number 17, Patrick Dudek, he is on the inside in the red helmet colour, Robert Lambert gate number 2 in blue, Jack Holder gate 3 in white and Jankovic he goes from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. They've ripped the outside. I get the feeling. It's only, I think I know where it's, he's going. It's an outside. It's a bit of a gut feeling that uh, Jankovic will go for that freshly prepared track on the outside. Yes, I tend to agree with that. I think he's only got one thing on his mind, and that's to uh, generate plenty of speed in that dirt down that back straight. But uh, plenty of home track experience here, of course, as you say, with Dudek and Lambert on the inside gates. Holder, ex rider here, knows exactly what the space is all about. He does indeed, and uh, there's no doubt that uh, the riders on gates one, two, and three are in good form. Robert Lambert will be a little frustrated with his performance so far. He would have expected to be winning races here tonight in Tour, and it hasn't quite been the case here tonight. He's on seven points, but uh, he's had three second places and a third. Can he uh, produce at least a second here, doesn't he? Yes, absolutely, to guarantee a top eight place and move into the semi-finals. But Dudek is riding well and is sharp away from the tapes. We saw heat number one. He uh, roared away from there. Heat number 17. Start Marshall moves away. Tapes up now. Dudek nails it. Absolutely fantastic from him. He fires himself into the first corner. Jack Holder coming through into second place. Keep your eyes on Quebec. Quebec round that outside has utilised it brilliantly. He's through into second place again, electing to go very, very wide. Here he comes into the picture once again. Dudek round the inside. Quebec up into the dirt once again. Will it prove to be the right decision? Well, he's coming on strong, Chris. Yeah, he's in two minds. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't want to stick at it. Dudek's covered it now he's got to go back to the inside Jack Holder now up the inside I think he's got that one covered Jankovic is going to have to go back to the fence and brave it out for a couple more laps this is not good news for Robert Lambert you know Jankovic round the outside of Jack Holder fantastic ever from him Dudek out in front Robert Lambert needs points I don't know if seven will be enough to make the semi-finals he'll have to be very patient can he get the better of Holder down the back straight on the final lap but Dudek He's out in front, he's winning races for fun, and he wins heat number 17. Kovac comes through in the second place. Great effort from him. 
but Robert Lambert is going to be very frustrated. And what an opportunity for Freddie Lindgren. If seven is not enough for the semi-finals, Freddie gets in, all of a sudden the 10-point deficit that Lindgren has, well, it might just be overturned. We'll have to wait and see. Dudek out in front, three points. Jankovic coming through into second place, two points. Jack Holder, one point in third. And Robert Lambert, bit of a shot there for me, failing to score in heat number 17. He's in the top eight now, but uh, there's a lot of riders behind him with a race to come, of course, and uh, he may well slip out of the semi-finals. Well, Kelvin, you had a gut feeling, as you called it, that Jankovic would go straight to the outside. Doesn't make a, a tremendous start from gate four, but he does exactly that, goes to the outside. Look at the speed he generates over Lambert and Holder down the back straight. Dudek out front. Had an immaculate night, really. He's gone 13 points. He will get a decent pick of gate in his semi-final. And Jankovic mentioned for him 10 points, first time he's got to the semi final stage. He's got a quick motorcycle, he's brave, he's able to ride right up to the fence with confidence. And uh, it's nice to see him there, but uh, it was a good move there. Jack Holder there does very well, good motorcycle skills, has to stop the bike. Otherwise, he's running into Jankovic, who's just stopped that run up the inside. Yes, and uh, congratulations to Jankovic, best Grand Prix by far. And uh, certainly a very good display from Patrick Dudek as well, moving on to 13 points. Just dropped a couple. A little bit fortunate to have 13 when you reflect on the incident with Dan Bewley, but uh, hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. A bit of luck on your side. You're never going to turn it down. Freddie Lingman's on the inside in the red helmet colour. Matze Janofsi, gate number two in blue. Dominic Cabrera, gate three in white. And Max Frick going from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Heat number 18. Freddie Lindgren, I tell you what, he will understand what's just happened. No doubt about that. He makes the semi-finals, and all of a sudden Robert Lambert doesn't. I tell you what, it's game on. It absolutely game on for silver and bronze. Freddie will be hungry for it. World number two, of course, this year. Would love to finish second again in 2024. Excuse me. And uh, Max uh, Janowski in second place. Hard ride there for Freddie Lingman. He would have wanted a little bit more. He uh, moves on to nine points. He's got a couple of wins, so he'll be in the semi-finals. As I say, danger is for Robert Lambert. Kubera out in front, three points. He's in the semis easy. Max Janowski, two points for him in second place. Freddie Lingman in third, one point. And Max Frick misses out there in heat number 18. So there's a position after heat number 18. Cabrera leading the way. Dudek Holder, Kovec, Freddie Lindgren, Robert Lambert in sixth place right now. Yeah, Janowski also there on seven, but uh, Dan Bewley is a danger man. So is Bartosz Marsley and Leon Madsen. They've got, uh, well, they've got a nail-biting weight, those guys, for sure. Certainly Lambert has. Yeah, super ride for Kubera here to top the charts. He will have first choice of gate with 14 points. Max Rick way out wide at the moment. Kubera is in third place, but we can see already the bike's just working nicely. Doesn't have to grab too much dirt. It does go right to the outside. On this occasion, rides into the berm. And you can just see he gets the bike under control there. Dips that left elbow, but it was a super ride from him. Uh, the bike is working very well. This is going to give him a lot of confidence. I've got to say, Magic Janowski, seven points, he finishes on. That won't be enough. So, Kibera on 14. It's um, uh, a brilliant display from him. We have seen that earlier on in Riga, of course, where Andre Lebedev had 14 points from his qualifiers and then missed out in the semi-final. Possibly the gate draw incorrect at that particular moment. So here we go for heat number 19. Kai Hukenbeck, a winner last time out. He's on the inside in red. Dan Bewley looking for points here. Gate number two in blue. So is Bartosz Schmarslik. Gate number three in white. And Kim Nilsson, who hasn't been amongst the points so far this evening from the outside. This is uh, crunch time for the two riders in gates two and three. The other two lads on gates one and four can't make the semi-finals tonight. So the world champion who uh, got back to winning ways last time and uh, he'll be relieved about that. But for Dan Bewley, what a strange night he's had. Two yeah. brilliant wins. Frustrating. And then, yeah, absolutely. And then no points from the next two and an exclusion thrown in there where he clearly wasn't uh, happy about it. But. Um, so here we go.
two wins earlier on, then two zeros. Comes out in his last ride, picks up a really handy win there. Three wins and two last places. He's still a man to keep an eye on. He's got a lot of speed and he looks like he's riding in top form tonight. Three points from Bewley. Bartosz Schmarzlik back in second place, two points. Kim Nielsen picks up a point for the first time tonight. One there and Huckerbeck misses out. This is how it's shaping up after uh, 19 races. Lambert there on uh, eighth place right now, but Leon Madsen can overhaul him. So can Martin Vashley. This is a huge moment in the context of the medals. Dan Bewley, this was uh, great composure and just shows how he was able to just put that decision to the back of his mind. Yeah, he's had a little bit of time to do that. He's obviously had a good long think. And he uh, comes off gate two, he's under pressure, he knows that uh, a win will seal the deal. And he makes a great start, gets out front, right works well. Schmarzlik was giving it a good go, a good go. Dan Bewley initially went round the outside, then he started looking to the, uh, to the outside, uh, but just leaving the corner, he was sort of drifting across halfway round the corner. And uh, certainly Schmarzlik, again, really no answer for the speed that Dan Bewley had. And that second place is... Uh, given him a spot in the top eight, it's not Janoski out. It has indeed. So for Dan Bewley, in the end, after a bit of a roller coaster of a night, I must say that was a terrific win. And in truth, he's been riding well all night long. It's just uh, unfortunate what happened there in his fourth outing. So this is a massive moment, and Robert Lambert will be keeping a close eye on heat number 20, that's for sure. Vasilik goes on the inside in the red helmet colour. Leon Madsen, gate number two in blue, but he's changed his bike here. Simon Wozniak had a gate number three in white, and Andre Lebedevs will go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Yeah, You're having a good look at the I, score chart, aren't I, you? I am trying to work out exactly what these guys need. Yeah, I'm just looking for Martin Fashlik. Has he had a race win? No. no. So he needs to win the race. Yes. Leon Madsen, a second would do him, and that would eliminate Robert Lambert. So Robert Lambert will be watching this race with interest. Absolutely right. Here we go then. Heat number 20. And, um, uh will have a huge bearing, actually, on the medals. Here we go, then. Into the first corner. Martin Vashlik, sharp away from the inside. He gets himself to the front. Here comes Madsen. Lovely turn back. Down the back straight. Leon Madsen fires himself to the front. I've got to say, Martin Vashlik, not sure quite where to go there. Was forced to go high and wide. Andre Lebedev's coming up the inside of him. But uh, Leon Madsen, the bike working nicely round the inside. It's going to be a hard man to beat from there. He is, yeah. If he could just cover the run off the corner, I think, particularly on the inside, in case Martin Vashlik switches his thoughts to that, which he may well do. He's had a look on the outside, it's not working. He's now going to go right around the inside. But Madsen's going to have that covered. And uh, this will put Madsen into the top eight and knock Robert Lambert out. Indeed it will. So uh, not the night that Robert Lambert was looking for. Leon Madsen has actually ridden very well now tonight. And this is finishing it off in some style. Got to say Martin Vashlik is coming under pressure from Andre Lebedevs now. Martin now round the inside with Lebedevs charging high and wide. But Leon Madsen comfortable. Lovely ride from him. He uh, finishes off in some style there. And, uh, he'll be pleased with that. He's won a couple of races tonight. Looks like the bike is working nicely for him. Saw Brian Carger down there in the pit bay a little earlier on. So they've got that bike hooking up really nicely. So three points for Leon Madsen. Finishes uh, with a fine win there. Martin Vashlik back in second place. Two points for him. Andre Lebedev, one point for him. And Simon Wozniak misses out in heat number 20. Here's the uh, outcome of the top eight. And it's not good news for Robert Lambert. Unfortunately, he has missed out on the semi-finals tonight. Cabrera, Dudek, Holder, Jankovic, Dan Bewley, Leon Madsen, Freddie Lindgren. Freddie Lindgren is in. Bartosz Schmarzlik just creeps in on eight points, courtesy of a win a little earlier on. So there it is. Semi-finals to come. Nice way uh, to finish the qualifying heats for Leon Madsen. Bike working nicely, slick on the inside, Chris, and the bike just really hooking up beautifully. Yeah, Martin Vashelik's almost inexplicably just uh, after making a decent start, runs across the middle of the corner. Don't really understand that. I think if you're going to go out there, you've got to go right out there. But from gate one, it's too far now, and he's just opened the door for Leon Madsen to ride through the gap. And once Leon Madsen got in front, uh, however hard Martin Vashelik tried, 
Uh, it just was never going to be enough, and Lebedevs was always putting him under pressure, whatever Vasilik decided to do. Lebedevs was countering it and just making him uh, more aware of his presence than what Leon Madsen was up to. So, Leon Madsen in the semi-finals, Robert Lambert. It was, uh, well, it was a frustrating night for Robert. Yeah, you got a feel for him, but uh, unfortunately here at home with high expectations, having won his first yeah, Grand Prix a couple of weeks ago, I'm thinking about he has uh, had a uh, tough run of it tonight. And uh, as I say, we will shortly find out exactly what points he will be handed out for, and then we can work out exactly what Freddie Lindgren needs to do to overhaul him, because he was uh, 10 points behind coming into tonight. So we'll see the uh, the championship points that are handed out at this stage. Bashlik gets eight, Robert Lambert gets seven, Matze Janowski sits, Frick on five there, Lebedev's four points, Hukenbeck on three, Wozniak two, and Kim Nielsen with one world championship point tonight. So uh, I think uh, the main interest now is going to be exactly what does Freddie Lingwin need to do? He needs a second place in the final. There we are. So he needs to finish second on the night to actually claim the silver medal. Lambert will finish on 144, Vashlik on 122, Mickelson slipping down, he's 101, but Jack Holder is going to overhaul him. That simply is the case. Ladies and gentlemen, very important information. We will know the winner of the start, but we have a surprise for you. The calendar Grand Prix season 2025. So, uh, like, uh, it's not too much more to go. So let's have a, a quick look uh, back at the uh, winning time so far this evening and uh, see if it's changed much I wouldn't have thought so too much but um, uh, it's some um, uh, last three races of the evening the last three races of the campaign of course um, uh, coming up for us Bewley uh, still hangs on to the fastest time of the night and we've got Holder there we've got uh, Leon Madsen a couple of times and Freddie Lingren Dan Bewley Dominic Cabrera and Patrick Dudek that's the Top eight. So now let's uh, look at the presentation for the uh, semi finalist here this evening. Uh, the top eight riders that have made the semi-finals so uh, we'll make our way down now for the gate choice for the uh, semi-finals let's get down to Abby Stevens gate selection then for semi-final one Dominic Cabrera up first he does top the score chart gate two has been favorable this evening but he goes from the inside gate. Dominic Cabrera will start from red. Up next, Jan Kovec. He makes his first semi-final in the Grand Prix. Some brave riding from him tonight. And Jan will start from gate two, from blue. Leon Madsen up next. He had an important last heat. And he strides straight to gate three. Freddie Lindgren going for the silver medal. He will start from the outside gate, from yellow. Semi-final number one. Kubera electing to go from the inside gate. Gate number two for Jan Kovec. Gate three for Leon Madsen. He was a hop and a skip there. Looked quite happy about it. And Freddie Lingwin will go from the outside in semi-final number one. Right, back down to Emmy, uh, Abby for semi-final number two. So gate selection for semi-final two and Patrick Dudek is up first. The wild card, he rides for Torren and he too goes from the inside gate. He chooses red. Jack Holder up next. Back in form, Jack Holder, and he will start from gate two, from blue. Dan Bewley's had an eventful evening this evening, and he will start from white, from gate three, which means 
Our five-time world champion, Bartosz Szymaslik, is up next, and he will start from yellow from the outside gate. There we go then, the lineup for the second semi-final tonight. Dudek on the inside, Jack Holder gate number two, Dan Bewley out of gate three, and Bartosz Szymaslik, the world champion, going from gate number four in the second semi-final. What a say, Kubera. Kubera choosing to go for gate number one. He has had success from there during the evening. Yeah, we've said it so many times, and it, it's tough in these races, these big important races at the end of the night, to give up gate one. And uh, certainly Kubera and Dudek bore that out. I thought they would still be brave enough to take two, but I think Kovec and Holder are going to be quite happy to be there. Absolutely, Jan Kovec having uh, the Grand Prix of his life here tonight. And uh, gate number two, when you look at the stats, the gate uh, stats, well, Quebec has every chance of making his first ever final here tonight in the final round of the 2024 World Speedway Championship tonight. And uh, kind of... He, um, there's no doubt that uh, he has ridden his socks off. And the Jack Holder, if he can finish third or better in the semi-finals, then he will be a uh, rider in 2025. So that's the target for Jack, who has upped his performance here this evening. And that's uh, good to see. He has uh, three Grand Prix in uh, Rotslav, Riga and Voins, where he just didn't get to grips with it at all. But there's no doubt that here tonight in Poland he has uh, ridden very well. What a moment this is for Jan Kovec, you know, he's got uh, a very good chance, you know, of making the final. I can't see that uh, he'll be intimidated, intimidated by this position. Leon Madsen, he looked absolutely overjoyed to get uh, gate number three, the way he came forward. He certainly wasn't disappointed um, uh, when he was left gates three and four, and he went straight there. As I say, gates two and three, slightly unusual to see those gates performing so well. Come on. Not always the case. Pretty Lingren. Well, this is a huge moment for him. He needs to finish second here tonight to win the silver medal in the World Championship. So a big, big performance required from Freddie to make the final from the outside gate. Yeah, it's uh, Freddie, if you set him a challenge, he always steps up, doesn't he? We know that he will be giving it absolutely 100%. They've ripped the outside again, so Freddie will be uh, looking at that. And uh, he may elect to go straight to the dirt in that first corner. Uh, if it works out, he may well just fire himself into the final. You wait to see. Kubera, 14 out of 15 in his qualifiers. What a night he's had. He really has looked fantastic tonight. The lineup for you for the first semi final. Kubera off the inside in red. Jan Kubek will go from gate number two in blue. Leon Madsen out of gate number three in white. And Freddie Lindgren from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. I say, he needs to finish second to overhaul Robert Lambert tonight. Now, what's been impressive about Kubera's performance tonight is he hasn't had to take any risks. He's got the bike working so well, he can ride almost anywhere he wants and still come out of the corner in front. Yeah, we've seen it time and time again, and uh, he has absolutely nailed the setup. And uh, you see the result, 14 points so far. He will not want to miss out now, having dominated the Grand Prix so far. That would be quite a shame for him. Hasn't had good Grand Prix in Poland. Very different tonight, that's for sure. But he won't want to miss out in the final. I think he's had four finals, but he hasn't made the rostrum, which will be frustrating for him. But uh, tonight, on the evidence of his performance, He's looking like uh, a top three runner tonight for me, but uh, you never can tell. Four laps to come, who's going to go? Devastated not to make the final. I feel for him. He'd, oh. he'd done enough, he was in front, but he just, just lost lifted, momentum. lifted violently coming out of turn two in the opening lap. Just couldn't quite hang on to it, killed his momentum. And, um, uh, there's no doubt that Leon Madsen took the opportunity with both hands. Lingren and Madsen there in the final here in Torrent tonight. Jan Kovec and Dominic Kubera misses out there. That is quite a turn up for the books. But what can you say about Fast Freddy? He's going for silver tonight now. What can you say about Fast Freddy? He's fast. That's what he does. He's gone straight to the edge of the day. He's absolutely timed that perfectly. Madsen was trying to look look for it. And uh, I've got to say, Dominic Cabrera actually in the end does well to stay on the bike. You see on the inside there, look at that thing right up in the air. He actually does well not for it to turn right even more violently because if it had done, 
with uh, Freddie coming around the outside. That could have spelt disaster, but uh, got it back down, got it under control, but he's lost too much speed. And Manson, he certainly saw that coming. It's straight up the inside. And a super ride for him to take second place. He's into the final along with Lindgren. Indeed he is. Opportunist move there from Leon Madsen. We have seen some carnage so, um, uh, on that turn number three. But uh, for those two riders, Lindgren and Madsen, they've got one more ride to come in the grand final, of course. And if Freddie Lindgren can finish second, then he will snatch silver here away from Robert Lambert. So, um, uh, we wait to see exactly the outcome of that. So, as it works out now, Jack Holder is already a uh, Grand Prix rider for 2025. He is in the top six as he comes to tapes for the semi-final number two. So congratulations to him. Fine effort here tonight. Patrick Dudek goes from the inside in the red helmet colour. Jack Holder out of gate number two in blue. Dan Beauty, gate three in white. And Bartosz Schmarzlik from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Another fabulous looking lineup here. Going to be some fireworks. You've got to believe there's going to be. Schmarzlik will be desperate, desperate to make the final tonight. Really hasn't had a, his own way. It's been a, a struggle. I've said that more than once this season. It's been a bit of a struggle, but somehow, somehow he finds a way to get into the final. Will he do it now? Tall order, I would suggest, from gate four. Yeah, yeah I, I can't see him making a, a start clear, getting across everybody. I don't think gate four is good enough for that, uh, particularly with gate two and gate three being slightly better gates. So, uh, yeah, this one's going to throw up a really interesting first turn. Will he do a lingering? Will he roar around the outside? He's got two choices, hasn't he? It's got to be a lingering, most likely, or it's got to be a well-timed cut back up the inside into turn three. Indeed. Well, we will see which way this goes. Difficult to race the call again. Who are you going to predict to go through to join Madsen and Lingren in the final? That's for sure. But Dudek's look good. Dan Bewley, when he hasn't been thrown out of a race, has looked exceptional as well. That is something very special indeed. Bartosz Schmarslik looks to the heavens there. He just can't believe he's got through. He was under huge pressure from Dan, uh, from Patrick Dudek. Dan Bewley with that stunning move to come around the whole field effectively. And he wins semi-final number two. Brilliant speedway once again. Bewley through. Bartosz as well. How has Bartosz Schmarslik got in the final? Don't really know how that's happened. Patrick Dudek and Jack Holder missing out. But that's the, that just shows you why he's a five time world champion great in determination that's not very there. fast no. just not working but he's there somehow this man is quick i tell you he is looking very good and there's no doubt he will have a great chance to win another grand prix in 2024 i'm not sure where you start with this one round the first turn dudek holder they're there looking good for them smiles has gone straight to the dirt we thought he probably would julie has gone to the back Bewley on the opening lap down into turn three he is in last place so it all changes look at Smarslik there bike looks uncomfortable when it grabs dirt it really is quite violent and that's a worry out there we can see it again there look front wheel in the air he's the footrest is just about running up the fence super brave great motorcycle skills two deck round the inside looks like he's got this one absolutely nailed but look at that move as he cuts back coming in to turn one on the second lap beautiful from Smarslik first lap and a half absolutely yeah. perfect Bewley, he's still last, still last. He's now making his way <laughs> into third place past Jack Holder. Oh, now I'm going to make my way past the five-time world champion, Bartosz Schmarslik, riding superbly, bike working nicely. But as you rightly say, Schmarslik, still mechanically, if it's down to wheel spin, whatever, but mechanically one of the slowest riders out there. Yeah, but he's made the final, and, and it's quite remarkable. And when you look at that, riders can learn from that. That is all about heart that is because the bike's not his friend and he's having to do work overtime on it Dan Bewley a stunning ride for so long he was out of the points and out of the final but found a way through and won semi-final number two in spectacular fashion Bartosz Marzik threw with him they're going to have to throw the kitchen sink at it if he's going to win here tonight because he's not going to get a good draw what, um, um, what, do, you, what, what do you think with the gate picks now uh, it's a difficult call. It's I, I really think, difficult. I think if I had the first pick for the final, I'd have to go gate two. I think I would just trust myself there. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, not easy, but the track won't be graded. No water will go on the track now. It'll be left alone. So there's no doubt that uh, 
possibly that inside line a little drier might just be able to get off the first turn in front here we go tremendously entertaining night Freddie Lingwin of course is in a uh, position where he can finish second in the world championship here so we will look at the uh, points that are handed out for the riders that missed out on the final tonight finishing third and fourth in the semi-finals so 12 points to Patrick Dudek 11 for Jankovic Dominic Cabrera only 10 points when he scored 14 in the qualifying heats and Jack Holder finished there with nine points but Jack is in the series next year so the final to come with the big points handing out Will Smarslik win a third Grand Prix this season looks like it's going to be a tall order in truth because it doesn't look very quick <laughs> um, but they're uh, going to have to make some changes feel, before the final you said it Cabrera you've got a feel for Cabrera you know missing out in that semi-final just grabbing all that grip coming out of turn two so just the three wins from the inside gate number two eight wins from there seven wins from gate number three and four wins from the outside just to, just to make it even worse all the qualifiers for the final have come from the outside gates <laughs> so it's final time let's make our way down to the pit area where we'll join abby stevens for the gate joints for the final Gate selection for the final time this season. Dan Beauty, what a semi-final he just put in. And he's going to go from the inside gate. Dan will start from red. Up next is Freddie Lindgren. Freddie needs to finish second in this final to get the silver medal. And he's going to go from the outside gate. He did just have a very brave outside run in that last semi-final. Up next is Leon Madsen. He's come third here the last two years. And he'll start from blue, which has been the favourable gate tonight and Bartosz Schmarslik walks to white he'll start from gate three line up for the final Dan Bewley on the inside gate number two is Leon Madsen gate three is Schmarslik and uh, Lingren will go from the outside in the final race of the 2024 Grand Prix season it's been a smashing night I do hope you've enjoyed it drama on this though real real tension in the air Robert Lambert as I say he will be really frustrated if the silver medal slips away from him 10 point lead coming into the final round tonight Freddie Lindgren with a desperate result two weeks ago in Voines just three points couldn't believe what happened but by golly, has he worked hard and there's every chance of him doing it now. Yeah, he took four confidently. I've got to say, he did when he stood there on gate four. He did take a big intake of breath. I think he realises just how brave he's going to have to be in that yeah. first turn. Because yeah. he knows he's not going to make a clear start and get across. No, he's, he's going to have to do what he did in the semi-final again. This man out of gate number three. Can he do something a little bit better? Bike hasn't been working quite as well as he would like, but somehow has managed to scrape his way into the final. When you look at uh, his evening's work, he's had three third places. Then, yeah, so um, uh, there's no doubt that uh, Smarslik has shown terrific resolve. The five points from his last two qualifiers have uh, proved to be absolutely vital otherwise he wouldn't have been in the semi-final you've got to think that they've they've made some changes between the semi-final and the final they've got to throw him something at it yeah maybe they change the bike because that bike he's riding it's like a rodeo out there you know every time he hits any grip i mean it just literally lurches up in the air he's uh, having to hang on to it i think as i said before it's all about his commitment and his determination it's not a fresh bike so uh, well, it's the same one it's the same one and indeed it is Brian Carger there just uh, keeping an eye on Leon Madsen Madsen up for a win as Abby Stevens was uh, informing us he's finished third in the last two seasons here in Torrent Leon Madsen and uh, Madsen is uh, a rider that can uh, win races and win Grand Prix he's not frightened to do that and this would be a great way to finish his campaign but the man on the outside so much interest in him now Freddie Lindgren can he snatch the silver medal away from Robert Lambert first or second that's enough I say enough in the final but uh, that's the uh, Easy. that's the that's the challenge for Freddie Lindgren now yeah this is uh, this is gonna be a great way to end this series here in Torren and uh, Smarslik. He's got a lot of work to do. 
<laughs> we have. We've got a multiple Grand Prix winner, of course, in Dan Bewley. He uh, slipped up last time he was in the final, but he has won Cardiff this year. He is uh, a very, very good performer in finals, has a fabulous record. He often wins them. He's back out in the final here again here this evening. Leon Madsen's won here previously, of course. And Bartosz Marslik has won last year, so he's looking back-to-back -back Grand Prix. But for Freddie Lindgren, this is a huge moment and a proud moment. You know, like, the way he's bounced back after that desperate night in Voins is, uh, is remarkable. Yeah, brilliant. It, 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 you know, that's the measure of the guy. That's what he goes and does. But um, interesting to see that Smarslik's the only multi-winner here in Torrum. He's the only one to win more than one. He's won three. Yes. So that's quite impressive. Yes, most things about him are, aren't they? Yeah, it's... Um, uh, Difficult to sort of pick holes in him, but uh, tonight, tonight, if you're going to be really, really fussy about him, Buck's not been working at all. But that's all the more credit to him that he's actually managed to battle his way through into the final. So for the final time in 2024, we've got four riders out on track in the Grand Prix. They are making their way round to the start line. For the final here in Torrent. It's been a terrific night of Speedway. I do hope you've enjoyed it. It's going to be a terrific conclusion, you would suggest. And then we will have all the presentations to bring to you after the conclusion of the next four laps. And uh, Dan Bewley, who has uh, recovered from the exclusion earlier on, and he will go from the inside gate in the red helmet colour. Leon Madsen out of gate number two in blue. Bartosz Marslik out of gate three in white. And Freddie Lindgren electing to go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Stunning ride from Lindgren around the outside in the semi-final to win it, to get to this stage. As you say, he took a big, deep breath as he came did. forward and thought, OK, I've got to do it again if I want to be second in the world in 2024 behind that man. He's already the champion. He clinched that two weeks ago in Denmark. OK, so, Kelf, while these guys let the clock run down, doing a little bit of gardening, trying to find the best spot to start from, who are yeah. you going with? I'm going to go for Lindgren. I think if he gets it right in the first corner, they just won't have enough for him down the back straight. And uh, the way he's ridden tonight, he's been a man on a mission, that's yeah. for sure. Can't disagree with that. Because you've gone with Lindgren, I'll go with Bewley off gate one. OK, let's see which way it goes. We weren't very good in our tips for qualifying earlier on, that's Dreadful. for sure. We were absolutely awful. But um, uh, let's hope we're a little bit more accurate here in the last race of the season. It's been a tough second half of the year with the Olympics, and then we're having three Grand Prix in three weekends. Then on to Vines, now here completing the campaign in Torrent. Everybody up on their feet. Fantastic scenes here in the Marion Rose tonight. Brilliant. What a venue it is. Here we go then. Final here in Torrent. Green lights on. Tapes are up. Away we go. Roaring into the first corner. Bewley locked alongside Madsen. Madsen's got there. Got to say, um, uh, Smarsley. Ruthless in the first corner. He blocked the move from Freddie Lingwin. Lingwin is out the back. Here comes Smarsley around the outside. He hits the front. Can you believe it? The world champion finding it somewhere. Here comes Freddie Lingwin as well. Madsen now back to the front. Superb speed we're here in the final. This is good from Madsen, he was really determined there. Smarsley looked like he'd made his way to the front. Here he comes, up the inside, he's got a straight line there. Can Madsen now turn the bike back? Can he get his wheels in line early enough? Smarsley's got to the dirt. Oh, I think he's done it. I think it's going to stick now. Brilliant stuff from Bartosz Smarsley. Really has found it tough tonight, but he's out in front. Beauty now into third place. Freddie Lindgren's going to miss out on silver now. He's out the back. Bartosz Smarsley untidy. One last blast for the world champion, and he's going to win here in Torrent. What a night for him. Can you believe it? Yes. That is a mark of a champion. Somehow finding the ingredients, the strength of mind to come through and win here in Torrent. His third win in uh, 2024. Got a feel for Lingren. He did everything he possibly could. Madsen relegated to second place. But the plaudits will be all about that man. And once again, he hasn't got it all right. Like Riga, he hasn't got it right. It's been a tough night for him. But when it matters, oh, he goes and does it. He does it in style. Chris. Unbelievable. He just never looked like a winner tonight. Having to ride defensively, the bike not really working very well. But by golly, when it really mattered, he just finds an extra gear. A stunning ride and performance again from Bartosz Marsley. Brudy coming through in the third place. Got a feel for Freddie. 
He must have felt that he had every chance of a silver, but Robert Lambert will hang on, hang on, on. to uh, the silver medal. Bartosz Marzik, stunning ride. He wins here in Torin. Leon Madsen back in second place. Dan Bewley in third. And Freddie Lingwin just missing out on the rostrum. And uh, he finished in fourth place. But uh, this man delights the home crowd. Yeah. He transcends the sport in this country. He is a huge sporting icon. And uh, that's the reason why. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, he finds it when he really needs to. But he's convincing three points from three rides. No, no, no. no uh, Chris, yeah. out of it. And the bike not working for him at all. Really struggling with it. I've got to just quickly say, whilst we applaud that man, five-time world champion, winning, winning again here in time for the fourth time. Madsen's picked himself up from a really nasty-looking crash and finished second in the meeting. Superb stuff from him. Can we see it again? Yeah. Look us through it. Yeah, it's a very even break, actually. Everybody makes a decent enough start. In fact, Lingren's the worst one, but, of course, we've seen it from gate four. But Smarslik, importantly, gets there before him, gets into the dirt. Lingren now doesn't have a run. Madsen's done everything right. He's got the bike hooking up around the inside. He looks confident. Smarslik, look at that. Little look across Madsen. Where's he going? Is he going to leave me room? Yes, he does. He hits the front. Looks good. Lingren, meanwhile, is now in in third place and he's thinking okay can i find a way between these two smiles that gets in a bit of an uncomfortable position there that now allows madsen back around him but then smiles lick up the inside once he got to the dirt once he got the run back down that straight he hit the front for the second time you've got to say there was no way he was going to let madsen back past him well no indeed tight finish in the end but um, there's no doubt that Bartosz Schmalzlik has broken Freddie Lingren's heart there with that move in the first corner as you say he got to the dirt first that was and, important and it was hugely important and uh, there was a chance for Lingren you know he was lurking there in third place but uh, at the conclusion of the four, four laps it's Bartosz Schmalzlik winning here for the fourth time stunning ride from him Freddie misses out so Robert Lambert will be crowned world number two and uh, he will be absolutely delighted and relieved. It's been a long wait. He must have felt that it was slipping away there, but uh, Freddie missing out. He trudged off the track. He did look particularly disappointed, and you can have sympathy for that, that's for sure. So uh, have a look at uh, the points handed out tonight. Schmarslick with a huge win there, 20 points for him. Leon Madsen with a good ride there, 18 points. Dan Bewley on 16, and Freddie Lingwin finishing in fourth place, 14 points for him. It's all done now. The championship is concluded. We will bring you all the facts and figures as and when they are delivered to us. But uh, right now, the top six, the top three, it's all done. And what a way to round the season out. It really has been a fantastic night. It has yeah. been a brilliant meeting because we've had pretty much everything. But I can't say enough about Bartosz Marsley. He breaks everybody's heart, doesn't he? Because they must have felt they had the edge on him tonight. But uh, the ride in the final was out of the top draw. Superb effort from him. So there's the outcome of the World Championships. Marsley is the World Champion. Robert Lambert just hanging on there for a silver medal. Congratulations to Robert Lambert. Fine effort. Freddie Lingren in third place. Bronze for him. Bewley into fourth. Martin Vasilik fifth. Jack Holder is sixth. Mikkel Mickelson seventh. All the best for Mickelson on his recovery. And Kubera finishes in eighth place. Madsen, Lebedev, Max Frick, Kai Hukenbeck, Simon Wozniak, Matze Janowski, Jankovic and Jason Doyle. So um, uh, Kubera there in eighth place, but uh, he has a second chance next week, of course, in part of it. So, and uh, there will be an awful lot of interest in that particular event. But for right now, it's celebration of time for the riders. Dan Bewley, of course, he'll be uh, pretty pleased. He's had two rostrums in the last two Grand Prix, two third places. Rode his heart out tonight, of course. Wasn't plain sailing. It uh, was uh, a bit of a roller coaster, but uh, that's a sexy suit, isn't it? Snazzy, that isn't yeah. it? I don't know if I'd get in it. Actually, I can guarantee you, wouldn't? I wouldn't. It'd be uh, certainly wouldn't get round the belly these days, and certainly my slightly longer legs would be protruding out the bottom. It looked rather odd, but um, uh, certainly for Vato Smarzlik, this is uh, he can relax now. He's worked so very hard to uh, maintain his form or recapture his form, and uh, wow. 
I, I'm still getting over the way he went about that and he managed to win. It, I just couldn't see it. I just couldn't see it. No, and he had to do it twice in the final. And I didn't think he had the speed in the bike tonight to be able to, uh, to, to, to really overtake anybody, let alone do it twice sure. in the big race of the night. Absolutely right. And uh, um, uh, our heart goes out to Freddie Lingren, who must have felt the opportunity to finish second again was there. Well, it was there. It was within his grasp, but uh, Schmarslick, he made that devastating mood. He's ruthless there, isn't he? When he needs to be, he has to do it. Robert Lambert, he'll be all smiles now. But uh, he must have felt that it was slipping away. Mm. But uh, second in the world. Robert Lambert, that is uh, a really, really good achievement. Yeah, he's continuing that progression. He's had a couple of decent seasons in the last couple of uh, years. And, uh, yeah, this, this is just a progression of that. He's now won a round. He's going to really be looking forward to 2025. And I reflect on the conversation that Greg Hancock and Abby had earlier on where Greg was suggesting that Robert Lambert could be the man that potentially takes it to Bartosz Marslik. But Robert Lambert didn't do what Bartosz Marslik did tonight. No, he didn't. Because Bartosz Marslik turned it around and Robert didn't. And if there's anything he needs to learn to be a world champion, that's something you have to find. Yeah, we've, we've said it so many times that Smarslik, he wins championships on his bad nights. And this was one of those, and he won the meeting. So um, uh, we will have the podium, first of all, for the uh, result of the Grand Prix here. Round number 11, of course, in Torin tonight completes the series and uh, Bartos just um, uh, well the centre green has become his changing room quite a public changing room but uh, there it is and uh, I tell you what if you need, need, some, ball, need some sunglasses on when you look at that suit that is very sparkly indeed but uh, a five-time world champion 29 years old Chris unbelievable and there's the uh, SGP2 world champion with him Victor Pashemski and uh, a terrific effort from him and uh, riders coming out now to congratulate the new world champion I think psychologically when you see Bartosz Smarslik do that when you are the other competitors you're just going to think what have I got to do what have we got to do to try and beat the man you've got to work harder than he does and that is going to take some work. Yeah, when uh, you hear and you see how hard he and how much effort he puts in, um, uh, yes, Ladies somebody's going to have to really dig deep if they're going to take it to Bartosz Marslik. So, uh, Dan Bewley, it's time to he will be uh, the, the first man up onto the uh, podium tonight weekend. with a uh, terrific uh, performance there, actually. The it's uh, not been an easy night for him, but uh, he battled hard there in the final. Finally uh, made his way past Dan Bewley, uh, excuse me, Freddie Lingren, and Dan Bewley coming up on the podium and uh, finishes his Grand Prix series with two third places. Congratulations to him. Yeah, he's battled hard tonight. Had that last place and then an unfair exclusion. Battled back. Yeah, brilliant stuff from him. So, uh, Leon Madsen, yeah, great effort from him. Must have felt he had a chance, but I tell you what, Bartosz Marsley seems to get the better of Leon Madsen. He's out in front on many a time. We've seen uh, Smarsley come for him, but Leon Madsen he will be pleased with that. He likes Torin. He has a very fine record here. Second place for the Danish rider tonight. But here comes the champion. He has uh, done a miracle there. He has worked the Oracle. An absolutely stunning performance in the final race of the night. And the five-time champion clearly absolutely overjoyed to do that. Really was a tough night for him. Didn't look likely, in truth. He really didn't. But uh, a stunning performance out of gate number three in the final. And there is so much respect for this guy. Not a single person, I don't think, has left this stadium. No, absolutely not. So um, uh, there we see Mr. Uznitsky coming forward there to present the third place trophy to Dan Bewley this evening. And uh, Dan will be uh, pretty satisfied with his performance. Miko Sikora, the FIM Europe president, comes forward now to present the second place trophy to. Leon Madsen. Leon's had a hard time this year. He's made it quite public uh, about his uh, private life and the family issues he's had. But a um, uh, decent way for him to finish. There's no doubt about that. And Pavel Gulwinski coming forward now, the mayor of the city. And uh, this is a proud moment, certainly for the mayor and also for that man. What a moment. 
And uh, for Bartosz Marsley, what a way to round out the series. No doubt about that. That is, uh, I mean, that really was out of the top draw. That was proper speedway there from Bartosz Marsley. Yeah, he was determined to underline exactly Pani what he's about, what a five-time champion is about. He did it superbly tonight. OK, let's um, uh, just take a pause and take a breath for the national anthem of Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're able to, please stand up for the national anthem of Poland. I mean, you can feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand up there. That really was quite special indeed. And Bartosz Schmarslik singing the national anthem with full gusto there. That really was wonderful to see. Everybody on their feet. As you say, nobody has left the stadium. No. Absolute total respect for all the competitors, but particularly the winner, of course. He is their champion. He is the people's champion. He's a lovely fella. I mean, he really is. He's always got time for you. He always says hello. And, uh, of course, his time is very precious. But uh, there's no doubt the effort he's put in in the last two or three months has uh, meant that he has come out on top once again. And he is the dominant force in World Speedway right now. And uh, through the winter, everybody will be working hard. And we will be questioning and talking about all the different scenarios. Who can take it to the five-time World Speedway champion? It's um, uh, been quite a, a journey for all of them, of course. But uh, when he gave that interview, when he won in Vines, of course, clinching the uh, the championship you could see the emotion in his face it really was quite revealing how hard he's had to dig to win his fifth title this year yeah he showed that he was human there and uh, he really did show us his emotions and uh, it was a fabulous interview actually i, yeah. I, I really enjoyed seeing that and uh, you know he's a he's a genuine sporting legend here in poland and at the age of 59 that is quite something yeah, and there's more titles to come. You've got to believe that. He uh, remains extremely humble, and there's no doubt his, uh, his hunger for winning uh, it remains. And there's no doubt to think that uh, in 2025, he'll be very keen to repeat his success. It's all about he effectively the gauntlet is laying down. Come and get me if you can. And uh, right now, in the last three years, nobody has. He's set the uh, bar quite high, hasn't he? And every, everyone around now looking forward to 25 knows how hard they're going to have to work to catch this guy up. Indeed. So Bartosz Marzlik enjoying his moment there. We're going to see more from him. We'll hear from him as well, of course. Uh, Dan Bewley finished the season off nicely there in third place. He'll be pleased with that. He's got uh, one or two more meetings to look forward to. Playoffs in Poland, playoffs back in the UK as well. Their work is not done. An awful lot of these riders are actually racing tomorrow in the uh, Polish League playoffs. So very little time to re relax and actually take in what has happened here tonight. That is uh, such uh, the schedule for International Speedway. So podium is uh, coming to an end for the result on the evening and then we will um, uh, just have a short pause. We may actually see uh, Victor Vizemsi come forward as well. He was there kicking about. We've got all the competitors there on the centre green as well as we saw last night in the SGP2. And um, must be tough for Freddie Lingwood to come out now. I feel for him. That was... Uh, 
tough moment for him. You know, when you consider how well he's ridden, and he just misses out. So, uh, let's make our way down onto the centre green. We can hear from the world champion. He's joining Abby now. Bartek, how do you do it? You got three points from your opening three rides. You're on the top step of the podium, the mark of a five-time world champion. <laughs> yes, uh, after the three hits, uh, I don't feel that too much fast, and but I'm all the time good thinking about what I make it, which the setups for the you know minimum make the plan in and being uh, in the semi-final. And semi-final, I feeling like wow, this is. I believe for possible the doing this today, and uh, I'm very happy because I'm all the time angry for the uh, heat like today in the final. And a few words now in Polish to this patriotic crowd. A few words in your in Polish now for the people here. Dobry wieczór, to również jeszcze raz. Dziękuję. Dziękuję i dziękuję. Piąty raz przyjeżdżam tutaj i odbieram na, waczy, na waszych oczach piąty medal. Jest to naprawdę dla mnie niesamowite przeżycie. Może dlatego jak przyjeżdżam tutaj na ligę, to mam też wciąż ciarki, ale te pozytywne cały czas z wami związane. I na Grand Prix czuję się tutaj naprawdę wyśmienicie. Dziękuję wam szczególnie za ten wspaniały doping, bo dzisiaj byliście ze wszystkimi Polakami, co naprawdę nas wszystkich to niosło i to jest piękne. Kochamy jeździć dla takich kibiców jak, jak wy. To, co dzisiaj zrobiliście. Dziękuję. Bartosz your 2024 world champion. So there we go. Bartosz Marzlik, the lighting home crown there, chatting to him in the uh, mother tongue. So um, uh, it uh, is uh, special times and you can uh, see the joy in his face. It really does mean the world to him. And uh, he has done it in fine style. It really is, uh, you know, it takes the breath away when he finds it. Just interesting to say, he felt that after the semi-final, he could win the final. And I'm thinking, not a chance, not a chance. I didn't think it looked that good, but uh, that's why he had the ultimate faith. And uh, he, uh, he absolutely believed he could do it. And uh, he came through in flying colours. Wow. He is quite a man, that's for sure. So all the riders coming forward now, they will uh, make their way up onto the podium for all the final ceremonies of the season here in Torin. Some will be feeling good, some not so good. Um, it's been a long, hard season, as it always is. As I say, a speedway, uh, international speedway rider's life is a busy one. A lot of travelling, a lot of commitment, a lot of pressure. Even in the club racing here in Poland, very, very competitive. So, um, uh, not a lot of respite. And as I say, uh, the majority of these riders are riding tomorrow in very high pressure playoff races. So, um, uh, not too much time to celebrate tonight. Yeah, it's not over yet for these guys. I like this, how they come out. It gives the, the fans a charge to show their appreciation for the series all year long and the excitement they've given us. So Freddie Lingwood coming forward, touch disappointed, but uh, I think tomorrow when he reflects on the season, he finishes uh, with the bronze medal. And uh, there's uh, fourth time he makes it to the top three. And for Fast Freddie, disappointing end to tonight, but uh, nonetheless, a third place. Now Robert Lambert coming forward. This is a very special moment for him. He must have been very, very nervous, thinking that uh, he was going to miss out on second place in the world. But for Robert Lambert, but that is some achievement, and what a season he has had. Yeah, he's had a great and season. It's good to see him out there making the more progress. The past two weeks. Absolutely five right. Times. And now, of course, the main man Champion coming forward. Bartos. Five times he's been here, and uh, it doesn't look like he's getting fed up with it, does he? <laughs> the novelty clearly has not worn off. He enjoys it immensely, and uh, he um, uh, comes forward. That bright, sparkly suit. I wonder if he'll ever ride in that. I suggest not. It would be dangerous to ride in it. <laughs> Indeed. But um, uh, terrific presentation here. At the uh, Miko Sakura coming forward now. The medals are going to be handed out to the top three in the world in 2024. So uh, third place for Freddie Lingren. So close to trying to pick up silver. He, um, uh, it's going to be a 
tough moment for him, but nonetheless, it's been another terrific campaign from the man from Sweden. So third place for Freddie, but uh, could easily have been second. Just didn't quite work out in that final because Bartosz Marslik got in the way. And uh, for, uh, for Robert Lambert, I tell you what, his parents are here, I know that. And uh, his uh, fiance, I mean, they will be so proud. And uh, as I say, this is a massive step in the right direction for uh, Robert Lambert. And now the gold medal, of course, for the world champion. We didn't see that much after him, of him uh, when he won in Boyens, but I tell you what, we're seeing plenty of him yeah. tonight. It certainly is making up for it. So, Bartosz Marslik, Robert Lambert and Freddie Lindgren, the top three in the world in 2024. So, uh, Jean-Baptiste Ley. He is the uh, Motorsport Series leader at uh, Warner Brothers Discovery for Europe. Mikhail Sakura, the uh, representative from the international governing body, the FIM, the joint presentation for the World Championship Trophy. Fabulous moments here. It's a joint effort between the uh, rights holders, of course, and the international governing body. But for that man, what a sweet moment for him to get his hands once again on the championship trophy. Yeah, one last chance to congratulate him. He's given us such great entertainment all year long. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you can, please be upstanding so for, for the national the, uh, anthem third time this evening, we will hear the national anthem of Poland.